Booyah! And we're live, and we're back. And this time, I'm actually really pleased because, uh, yeah, of course, no discussion is complete talking about marriage, weddings, and lives out here without actually having the wife uh, <laughs> present with us, eh? Yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah, you can introduce yourself, Tenlai. Yeah, hi. Actually, now people can see, yes, Brad have a wife in Vietnam. So, we are here. Right on. everything. <laughs> sure, <laughs> sure, sure. Um, anyway, um, along the way, uh, to, to give you a broader picture, <laughs> uh, we're actually going to have our two-year anniversary tomorrow. Tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> so we're quite pleased. And uh, also to fill you in, um, yeah, we're in Hue City right now. Hue City, Vietnam, that is. And uh, we have a house by uh, uh, Thái Lộc. Um, by Seattle. In the Citadel, in the, in the Citadel. Citadel walls. Yeah, yeah. Renting to answer your next question, and it's awesome. Yes. Uh, six... We are on the rooftop now. Yep. Hence the construction noise. But that's hey, that's what it sounds like here. <laughs> <laughs> we but... can hear some chicken from here. Bird, mm. chicken, mm -hmm. everything. Cicadas. Yeah, yeah, Cicadas. yeah. It's uh, it's. Mm. Ah, we live in, yeah, in Way City. Straight up, Henry. Um, this is the place. Uh, we did consider different living in different cities uh, throughout the country. In fact, we thought about Da Nang at some point or another. We never thought about Hanoi or Saigon, uh, honestly. I, I mean, you lived in Saigon. Yeah, but after two years, uh, so I missed Hue so much, so I went back here. Mm. The old capital, peaceful. Right, right, right. Although there's something positive to be said about every city, and in your case, it sounds like uh, there, Henry, you dig uh, Hanoi. So, terrific. Hey, there's good things to be found everywhere and good people to be found everywhere. And um, once we, um, once we, you find the, what do we call it? Like a city that you dig, um, and you can really settle down, that's where things start to get great. You get to know friends a lot better, uh, you get your roots in, you get to know the local slang and the local jokes, the areas, the streets, uh, you know, basically live, live somewhere. But anyway, uh, to focus on things a little bit better, yes, uh, it's exactly what it looks like. I, as an American, have uh, uh, married Tun Lai here. Uh, and in the beginning, to kind of start there real quick, uh, I came here on a volunteer trip about five years ago, six years ago, uh, building a computer lab for a school, met a lot of people, lived in a Vietnamese neighborhood, uh, basically focused on learning the culture and the language and volunteer work and that kind of thing, and uh, met Tan Lai, among other people, along the way. And, uh, and actually, here's a fun secret, she didn't actually like me at all <laughs> yeah, when we first met. So that's, yeah, that happens. But, uh, or what did you think? I don't want to put words in your mouth. So, I'm going to ask you to ask Landau Tien. Landau Tien, who is my name? Yeah, he's weird. <laughs> Super weird. I met, I have met many foreigner white people before. I talked to them a little bit. I made friends with some people like that. But as the first time I met him, I thought, uh, this guy, uh. <laughs> but after all, I found out that he he learning Vietnamese, so it's a good point to make friends with him. So it's the first time I thought he was a interesting guy because he he spoke a little Vietnamese. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Or just spoke uh, bad Vietnamese bad. really loud. <laughs> that a lot. <laughs> but anyway, uh, we effectively had a long distance relationship. Uh, uh, of course, I went back to America. Um, I wasn't here straight for six years. Went back to America and uh, yeah, we kept in touch over the phone um, and uh, that kind of thing. Oh yeah, good question, Henry. Um, so now, and then I chung ta noi chun when you ang ma ma chung ta ayu a pa ham. Yeah. Like and then yeah, ko lai tan tuong. Ah, wan yu lan na ya ta noi tiang viet bu em ai va em ai cha loi bang tiang an, right? So yeah, it, at the beginning until now, we always communicate like that. He speak 
Vietnamese. I speak English, and we uh, we can understand each other easily, and we can learn each other better. Yeah, 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 definitely, definitely. Um, and yeah, like uh, I know that Vietnamese speaks to her heart, and English speaks to her mind. Similarly, one could argue. Uh, Vietnamese speaks to my mind and English to my heart, something like that. So we're always trying to accommodate one another. So I think that's the big idea. Um, and that's really one major thing I want to uh, bring up to folks is making the effort, making the effort. Uh, another way of saying it is um, that, uh, yeah, thanks by the way there, Nicholas. Um, and I always do my best to be as accommodating and uh, take care of Tan Lai in every way I can, learn everything about her and her family. Uh, she's number one in my life. It's that simple. And I want to learn everything about her, communicate to her in her language, in her way. Um, so, and actually, she does the same. You know, really wants to do her best to accommodate me in my life and so forth. Now, they do, there are some words that people use um, like uh, that I don't agree with. For example, a lot of people will say, oh, Vietnamese women are, I hate this word, submissive. Submissive. Mm. You know, like go to Vietnam, you can find yourself a submissive wife. She will take care of her man forever and silently sit there and be your slave. I think that's completely misleading. Com Ooh. Ooh, I know. <laughs> like, never think about that. Yeah, like, I listen to that. I'm like, whoa, like, what are you talking about? Like, first of all, first of all, are you actually trying to, like, find a slave? I mean, that's a shit plan to begin with. Yeah, okay. it's a shit plan. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Second of all, even if you did, would you dig it? If so, for how long? Okay, come on. Come on. No, it's got to be a two-way street. So I'm going to repeat this over and over again throughout this whole uh, live stream. It has to be a two-way street. All of it. All of it. Um, so, but yeah, I let's get the word submissive out of our vocabulary altogether. And um, now, um, never really heard... Um, anyway, more... Uh, another general note... Um, are when um, comes to Tan Lai here, I met a, I did want to say I traveled to a lot of countries, maybe let's say 30. I don't know. I didn't keep a log. Um, and I'm on passport number three, so whatever. <laughs> uh, speak a bunch of languages, you know, six or seven, I don't know. Uh, but in the end, I met a lot of people, including women. But Tan Lai is genuine, okay? That means not counterfeit, not counterfeit, okay? So in the beginning here, when we're talking about um, when we're talking about uh, relationships and finding the right person, finding the right man or the right woman, or significant other, finding one that's genuine and not counterfeit is the key, okay? Here's a simple question: What's worth more, a five dollar bill or a counterfeit $100 bill. On the surface, the 100 looks like it's more, but it's fundamentally worth nothing. $5 is worth more than a counterfeit $100 bill. Okay? Similarly, oh, look at this girl. Oh, she's super hot and really fun and has big tits. Yeah. You know, she's counterfeit. Potentially. I don't know. Maybe maybe she's awesome. I don't know. But if she's counterfeit, it doesn't matter. Okay? Also, let's draw a distinction between... Coming here and getting a squeeze, a fling, a one-night stand, a gal to keep you company on the side from time to time. That's fine. That's cool. But that's different than a wife. Okay? I, I, we have to be very clear about this, that there's a distinction. If you want to come to Vietnam and mess around, go right ahead. If you want to, uh, more power to you. Uh, but if you want to actually settle down and get married, looking for genuine, not counterfeit, honest, are the biggest keys. So, on this whole ordeal, we got a lot to cover here today, but let's start there. How to find the right person, and I'll just use the words, uh, find the right woman, just to save on the pronoun game, okay? Find the right woman. Um, here's some main tips, or some main things to watch out for. A, yes, counterfeit, not counterfeit. 
B, if you find a, if you are in a major city hanging out in an expat community, especially out at the bars and so forth, let alone your first stop as soon as you get into a city is, oh, let's go out to the bars and hang with all the expats right here. Oh, there happens to be a woman here. Oh, let's talk to her, blah, blah, blah. You might have some luck, but I doubt that. Uh, it's less often the case. Now, similarly... Mm, oh, yeah! Sure, and we'll get to the visa thing here soon. I mean, there's a multi-step thing, of course. Um, but I did want to say, um, finding the right one at the right place. If you spend all your time um, just out at the bars and banging, but you never sit and have coffee, you never call one another, you never like go out to dinner, you never go for long walks, you never meet the, each other's family, you, uh, things like that, that's a red flag. That's definitely a red flag. Um, ah, good question there, Henry. Yeah, very good question. Um, I just didn't go into the expat community in the first place. I mean, a lot of people... Yeah, they read on the forums, like, oh, okay, well, I'm going to Saigon. Uh, that's what everyone suggests. Oh, here's an expat community that I could live in. Oh, uh, here's a place that uh, um, where I can live with a bunch of other expats I saw featured on YouTube. Ah, uh, yeah, and then, oh, Airbnb. Oh, perfect, let's go there. Hey, where's the most popular place to go? Oh, let's go down to Phong Ngu Lao. Perfect, District 1, Backpacker. Let's live right there. Hey, let's go on uh, Facebook and meet the expat forums, and then let's uh, make all of our friends right there. Oh. They have a, a hangout night. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Next thing you know, you've got yourself 20 friends. Uh, all expats. All just got there. All living in that area. All going downtown. Right. And uh, in my case, I just skipped all of that. All of it. I never did any research online at all. I just purely moved to a uh, uh, local neighborhood. Got a one-room apartment. And that was it. There was just plain no white people at all in my neighborhood, period. And, um, and, ah, Hey there, John. Um, well, in my case, I taught myself Vietnamese. Uh, this is not my first foreign language. It's actually probably my sixth foreign language. So um, I've never learned anything like Vietnamese before. But what I can say is they um, um, there are strategies uh, to learning on one's own. And by the way, um, I teach those strategies. And yes, I am a language teacher. Ironically enough, I teach Vietnamese. Um, and, uh, yeah, to answer your question real quick, Henry, uh, <laughs> man, fire away. This is fast paced here, isn't it? I need more beer. All right. Um, yeah, well, obviously English, but along with which, uh, my Spanish is perfect. Uh, uh Italian, I can understand it. Certainly, uh, speak it. Okay. Portuguese. Okay. Um, Chinese, pretty good. Hmong, pretty good. Um, a Thai, a little bit, a little bit. Uh, sign language, pretty decent. Um, and yeah, my Vietnamese is... Mẹ nghĩ có lẽ có thể nói ít giỏi bây giờ. So, like, tư, nam nam á. Yeah, giỏi, rất giỏi. Yeah. And my family can understand his Vietnamese perfectly. So, it's good, it's very good for him, for family to communicate and I'm very happy with that. Right, right, right. Because that's the other thing. When it comes to meeting someone, if you never meet her family whatsoever, woo-wee, uh, that's tricky. Now, I did want to point out, uh, Henry, uh, how long did it take to get to a decent level? Uh, it's hard to say. It took about two weeks to be able to um, be really good and have conversations with people about normal topics, have coffee, have beer, hang out, make friends. Uh, meet people, the women in the fruit market, and laugh with them. Yeah, it took about two weeks to be smiling. Um, I would say after a month, like, I could really formulate broader things, uh, talk about a lot more topics and whatever. But, hey, it's an ongoing climb, man. I could say I'm fluent, which fluent, by definition, is easily able to communicate articulately. That means I talk about a wide range of topics easily without really thinking too hard fluent so yes i'm at that level do i sound do i sound like yes and i learned it all from scratch myself absolutely uh i wanted to learn english which is so difficult to find. yeah that's right you're exactly right that's right that's exactly right and uh since you asked henry i did want to point this out uh you get another problem and i'm going to talk about this a little bit more later uh when it comes to uh mixed couples uh for example vietnamese and english you know speakers a hundred percent of my experiences, okay? Not most, not half, 
100% of the time. Boop. Throw away all Vietnamese and switch 100% to English. After all, uh, she wants to learn English. I am doing the right thing. I'm such a gentleman. I'm never going to learn any Vietnamese whatsoever because she wants to practice and learn English. What can I say? That makes a lot of sense. You're welcome. I'm doing you a favor. Mwah. I'm never going to learn anything about you. You learn how to cook my food for me. You learn about my culture for me, and you learn my language. Because I love you so much. Because I care so much. I'm trying to help. Yeah. That's a trap. Ha-ha! <laughs> <laughs> that is a fucking trap. Yeah. And it's a big, fat lie. Um, so, anyway, the whole two-way street thing. Um, and, uh, oh, hey, Henry, uh, we'll talk a little more later, uh, but on materials and stuff, um, but uh, that is one example of something that I can help with in more detail, um, but, uh, but no worries, no worries. Here's more to the point though, um, when we are, mm, with regards to the language, again, it's got to be this two-way street thing. Now, uh, also learning the language, this happens a lot, a lot, where uh, the, let's say, girlfriend or wife in the mix will say, Something like this. Don't bother learning Vietnamese. It's way too hard. There's too many tones. The grammar will be too tricky, and you won't even sound good anyway. Don't even bother. Don't even try. Yep, that happens a lot. A lot. Uh, number two uh, problem. Oh, she'll just translate for me everywhere I go. When I go to hang with her family, she'll translate for me. When I go to a restaurant, she'll read the menu on my behalf. Uh, whenever anyone asks me a question, uh, uh, what'd they say? Uh, oh, uh. Yeah, that's actually easier than turning on your brain, thinking, uh, understanding what the Vietnamese is, and focusing and going from there. Instead, take out the menu and be like, can you explain this? How is this pronounced? Ah, bun tit nuong, nuong, nuong. What does nuong mean? Oh, okay, bun, bun. Oh, so we have bun and min and me and ah. And, um, okay, so tell me more. What do these look like? Oh, Google Images. Yeah, let's talk together. Let's keep going. And um, anyway, um, that is one other strategy that you can take. So don't be a lazy fool. Don't be a lazy fool. That's what I want to say. It is so easy to be a lazy fool. Okay? Um, and uh, pr next problem, uh, a lot of times a wife... Uh, or girlfriend is not a professional teacher at all. So their strategy of teaching is going to suck. For example, like, all right, we're going to spend one hour. This is A, uh, A with a hat over it. Uh, wrong. Uh, wrong. Ah, uh, wrong. Con, wrong. Ah, uh, C, A with an upside down hat over it. And con, wrong, wrong, wrong. Two hours later, I hate this. I'm never learning Vietnamese again. Right. That happens all the time. All the time. I've seen it like almost every relation. Oh, yeah. Over and over. Power through that. All right. Don't learn Vietnamese from your significant other off the bat. They probably are. Oh, I'm sorry, baby. I'm sorry. Yeah, don't. Um... But anyway, there's a lot of, again, strategies and ways of going about it uh, that we can cover at a different time. Um, no, I don't believe in language centers I, in general. And yes, 100% self-study. I can learn far faster than the language center, right? Give me their two-month syllabus, and I'll bang it out in a weekend. Yeah. Um, so, anyway, again, it's here's the thing. I don't dedicate one hour a week to Vietnamese, or 3 o'clock until 5 o'clock, it's my uh, learning time. No. Every single waking moment is learning time. Wake up next to my wife. It's learning time. Go out for coffee. Learning. Yeah, every menu I see, every sign I see, every moment, every time I hear the news, every time an uh, advertisement pops up on YouTube, I watch it and try to understand it. Yeah. Uh, every minute of my day is learning Vietnamese and every conversation that we have is learning more Vietnamese. So, yeah, again, it, it can be done, but it takes an ongoing, relentless, constant effort all the time. Similar to relationships, similar to marriages. The beautiful thing is because I put forth so much effort into, of course, learning the language and by extension, you know, the culture and about Tan Lai's life, mind, etc. And, um, uh, in this case, the rest of the details of our marriage and building that is easy uh, by comparison. Every single time I talk, I try to think on her behalf. Um, also, every single thing that she says, um, I, I listen very, very closely because um, I want to understand not just the words she's using, but what she meant by it. And similarly, when I say something in Vietnamese, it might sound 
like either blunt or weird or wrong or something like that. But time line, you look at what I probably meant by that, you know? So in other words, by jumping languages, um, we're accommodating each other and also trying to be extra, extra understanding of one another. Um, like a funny example is uh, Tan Lai came to one of the classes I was doing um, at uh, TTM school. And she showed up to my surprise and I wanted to say something to the effect of, oh, you're here, that's great. Uh, how can I teach you? And what would you like to learn today? Something like that. But when I said it in Vietnamese, I'm like, that's how I'm dying. Yeah, why are you here? Why are you here? You know, which sounds weird and dumb in Vietnamese, but Tan Lai is like laughs like, what you probably meant was, <laughs> right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, and I think, because I'm learning English, so when he says something in Vietnamese, I can, I know the way he wants to say in English and Vietnamese both, so I can understand, understand him easier. And then, he learned in Vietnamese and he do the same way to me. He can understand my broken in this easy and easily. Easily. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just playing, baby. You say what you want, baby. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's, it helped we a lot to learn each other. Right. Yeah. And I tell you, I, I want to point this out. If you're looking for a perfect person, you'll never find them. If you're looking at getting perfect in a language, you'll never get there. Finding a perfect city, place, if you're searching for perfection, you'll never get it. So, when it comes to even like my Vietnamese, as long as I'm like 80, 90% close and at least understandable, good to go. And if Tan Lai is 80, 90% close and understandable, good to go. In other words, I don't spend time nitpicking and I don't spend time on uh, huge like details. I'm not going to draw out how to pronounce one word in, for 40 minutes. No way. As long as you're pretty close most of the time, yeah. good enough. So I think being real uh, casu or casual like that, or, uh, not so strict, there we go. Um, if your wife or girlfriend is in a, a teacher of some kind, she's coming from a highly strict background, so she's, gonna ex she's been had perfection pounded into her, you know, like uh, it, it, academically. So when she approaches you, she's gonna try to hit you with, gotta be perfect, gotta be perfect, gotta be perfect, and it's gonna frustrate you and you're gonna quit, period. So don't be trying to be perfect, I think is another tip, you know, when it comes to languages back and forth. Every, another tip, every single thing that you say, do it in both languages, all of it, everything. You know, wash the dishes, uh, repair the fridge, clean the floor, um, get my phone. Uh, um, like, um, I'm Shady Bangsa Maham. You know, are you going by motorbike? Oh, okay. Um, Maybe Chan Lai will say something uh, like, oh, me, yeah, yeah, I'm not more, more out. Yeah, like, oh, today I bought some clothes. Or uh, when I make a request, I might say something along the lines of, like this, uh, and you can translate, like, oh, chung tui shi di, di choi, ba shi di, nha hang, huang shen. Yeah, ba chung tui mon mơ em, em go toi nha rãn, luk ba yue, den nam nha hang. Okay, and so I will answer him like, Okay, I have free time from three until five, blah, blah, blah. Right. So, yeah, when I just asked you yeah. in so, English. So, he asked me to, he will go out to hang out with friends to go to the Hong Shen restaurant. And he wants to know if I have time to go with him. Booyah! <laughs> Varsity player! <laughs> Whoa, beer everywhere. That's all right. So, anyway, um... Great. Um, <laughs> now, moving forward a little bit here. Uh, more circumstantial kind of stuff. Um, yeah, forming a relationship. Now, I did want to mention there's a lot of Vietnamese women in general, and I've seen this a lot, where they don't necessarily want to introduce their boyfriend to their family. That might seem a little odd, okay? But I did want to explain something about that that it's also odd for Vietnamese families to see their daughter who like, oh, you meet this new guy? Great. Oh, and then uh, a few months later, oh, you meet this new guy? Oh, hello. <laughs> and then uh, you, six months or a year later, you see another guy. Oh, hello. Uh, 
Uh, you got a whole other issue here, the grandmothers, okay? Because the grandmother can be like, oh, looks like she's got a great, great. And the grandmothers are going to tell their whole neighborhood, my granddaughter is seeing this wonderful guy from this country, da, 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 da. Six months later, oh, uh, I was wrong. It's a different guy from a different country. I guess she really likes it. It's an issue, okay? Is that sound right to you or you tell me? You tell me because, let's face it, you're the pro here. Yeah, and... And the foreigner boyfriend and with me boyfriend is very different in their mind. They think about that with a different way. So if you introduce your family or with me boyfriend, it's okay, it's good, they're happy with that. But when you introduce a foreigner boyfriend with your family, so the, your family think about that too much. Do you know? Who he is, where is he from, what he chop, do he sit with you, he will stay here with you, or he should have fun with you and he go back to his country, uh, or go to other city to have other girlfriend, blah, 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 like that. So they worry about that so much. So that's Rightfully why. so! <laughs> Rightfully so! And, and, <laughs> and because it's, there is a reason for that, many... I just say for general, many foreign boyfriends had that, do that, something like that. So that's why the, the family is so worried about that their daughter has a foreign boyfriend. Sure, yeah. sure. Which makes, um, really going to be talking? Oh, yeah, 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 thank you. Yep, Long Dong, you brought up a great point. <laughs> we don't blend in. Yeah, buddy. Especially a handsome fellow like yourself. Um... Ah, right. Yep, yep, yep. There, uh, and Long Dong, you have direct first-hand experience on this, especially being a good uh, two meters tall and a majestically handsome guy like yourself. You don't blend in for shit. Yeah, of course, uh, you're going to be brought up and so forth. In fact, I did want to point this out. When I first met Tan Lai, the first year that I was here, so let's say within the first couple months of me being here, <coughs> I invited Tan Lai to go with me to Cambodia. Because she's never left the country. And I thought, nah, what the heck, got a, uh, a couple spare bucks, I'll just bring Tan Lai. Sound pretty straightforward in my mind. Shoot, I've been to 30-some countries. What's 31? Let's do it. Oh, you've never left? Let's do it. Uh, visas are free for Vietnamese to go to Cambodia. What the hell? All of this sounds great so far <clears throat> from my perspective. Now, uh, that took about somewhere between one and 45 seconds for the entire country to know that I invited Tan Lai out to Cambodia. Uh, and it took, within minutes, the phone was already ringing. What are you doing? Are you sure about this guy? Hoo wee. Uh, in fact, uh, her parents were just like, uh, they were polite and all, but they were like, no, there's no way you're going to take my daughter to a foreign country. You, Mr. Random Backpacker that we can barely understand, that we have never met before and have no idea who you are. Oh, and you don't even live here in Vietnam. And you're leaving the country momentarily. And before departing, you want to bring our daughter to a foreign country she's never been? Uh, no. Makes sense. I mean, I would be equally as skeptical as a parent. Sure. We did go with a chaperone, or we brought a cousin, but, but what was your parents? Uh, so there was a, we were a three-pack instead of a two-pack. That's cool. But uh, what were your parents' feelings in the beginning? Maybe you can describe more accurately. Yeah, at, at that time, we didn't, we didn't tell them that we were going to Cambodia. At that time, they said, you, Brad, and Tanai can go to Saigon to see my sister there. And then Brad can go to Cambodia alone, and I will stay at Sega. So at the time, we talked to my mom and dad about that. And Brad tried to speak Vietnamese with them, so that made them feel a little comfortable, a little better. But still, they don't want me and I to go to Cambodia with Brad. Understandably so. <laughs> Makes perfect sense. And at the end of that, conversation Brad had to say slow in with me that chúng tôi sẽ đi Sài Gòn không đi Cambodia <laughs> that's it <laughs> line number one no I'm just kidding no. <laughs> <laughs> 
Right. <laughs> but then when we went to Saigon, we talked to my cousin there, and she went to go to Cambodia too. So and then I made a call to my parents to say, "Hey, mom and dad, my cousin Hao went to go to Cambodia." So if I go with her, it's okay. <laughs> so my mom and dad said, "Okay, you can go with cousin Hao." Maybe with Brad, huh? Okay. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah. So, um, anyway, there's a, um, yeah. Um, but here's the important idea, though. Uh, once I ended up returning after a year, um, roughly about a year, came back. Coming back for round two, well, that dispelled like eighty, ninety percent of the worries. In other words, uh, Brad is not just a guy. Um, Uh, that just is passing through like a backpacker, like everyone else. He is not just a standard live in the bubble expat guy. Oh, okay. He is actually genuine and came back purposely to see us again. You know, that kind of thing. And obviously after several conversations with them, once uh, they got to know me and I got to know them and we can have dinners and laugh together and they realize that I'm genuine, not just some counterfeit, you know, in today out tomorrow piece of shit kind of guy. <laughs> Basically, um, they really, really, really got fond of me, and all of a sudden, really warmed up to the. All of a sudden, over the course of two years, but over time, anyway, uh, they uh, yeah, really appreciated the whole idea of me being part of the family in the long run. Um, in fact, when the proposal came, they were absolutely delighted. I what? Did, well, you tell me. How were your parents feel after we had our? Engagement, or when they heard I proposed. <laughs> yeah, before that, we they know that we are we were in a relationship, but they still so worry about us. Yeah, because the same reason they don't know if after two year, even five or seven year, he left. So, so they still worry about that. Which but, makes sense. Yeah, it just makes sense. Every parent. They love their daughter, so the thing about that is it makes sense. So after they heard that we get engaged, so they just like uh, absolutely love that, and they not worry about that at all. Mm -hmm. And and it's better because my parents met Brad, uncle and aunt before, so now we get engaged, so it it go perfectly. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Certainly, certainly. Um, and um, I did want to mention, okay, so just to kind of keep moving things forward little by little here and get into some of the meat and potatoes. Um, okay, uh, let's see. They... Ah. Mm, oh, that's a great question, Henry. Um, I don't... It never really came up, I guess. Maybe. Um, because I had no intention of necessarily marrying Tan Lai and bringing her back to, bring her back to uh, America. Um, I didn't really bring that up. Uh, she didn't ask. Uh, that just wasn't part of the equation. Um, But the, if it happens, then I'll worry about that because I'm, I can do the everything by myself. So if we go there and we stay here because I love it, so they're not worry about that. Yeah. Yeah, and if we did go to America, it'd be fine. <laughs> and if we moved to Russia together or India, it'd be fine. <laughs> you know? it's just, we happy, they happy. So. Right, right. Now, I did want to mention, uh, kind of touch on this whole idea of country, which country to live in, okay? This does deserve some uh, time, okay? And we could use the example of an Australian marrying a Vietnamese, and then you have that choice, live in Vietnam or uh, live in Australia. Similarly, I have that choice of bringing Tan Lai to America and or uh, living here in Vietnam. It is kind of tricky to do a half and half thing. Ideally, you could, but that's hard. At some fundamental point, you've got to choose a home, generally speaking. Um, now... Uh, way over 90% of the time, uh, when folks uh, like us, uh, mixed uh, a couple, mixed nationalities, marry, they tend to go to the first world country or the western country. <laughs> they just, 
Even though sometimes the countries are, I don't know. America's east of here. I don't know. I, but it's the western, uh, whatever. Um, more to the point, um, I understand why uh, folks want to do that. Now, I had a very, very, very interesting Reddit post that I want to actually quote and read out loud right now. Uh, because it was extremely well written and um, puts things in really excellent perspective. And this was, uh, and I'll try to give credit to the, okay, e uh, uh, Edo Longitude, Edo Longitude, uh, lives in Vietnam, and he's talking about uh, people that he's met, specifically Vietnamese women that have married or uh, married uh, foreigners and moved to said countries. These are examples that he's heard, and I can supplement this. Wait, you mean we can't afford to have a nanny if we move to Australia? In Vietnam, we can afford to have a nanny for sure, but uh, Australia? No? What? That's weird. Oh, you mean we have to cook at home for nearly every single meal because eating out is so incredibly expensive? Yep. Uh, uh, sure do. In Vietnam, you can eat out anytime you want. In fact, three meals a day, you're fine. Uh, Australia? Nope. Um, wait, uh... You mean I need to commute from the suburbs to London an hour every day each way? Yeah, sure do, bro. Wait a second. My lawyer husband, all he can afford is a tiny one-room apartment that's miles away from downtown London? Yep. Welcome to England. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> you thought your life was just going to be a palace and rich? Nah. Uh, you mean my college degree, years of experience are completely completely worthless and the only job I can get is a Vietnamese restaurant or a nail salon yep ha! Uh, you mean it's actually hard to live thousands of miles away from friends family food traditions and everything that I'm used to forever yeah these are all these gotchas you know that a lot of people find prior to leaving uh, pr one of the issues is a lot of Vietnamese people have this built up grass is always greener all i gotta do is get to america snap the fingers and then everything is perfect we're infinitely rich infinite amount of time infinite freedom and i uh, can do anything that we want from there and i effectively won the game can come back to vietnam and i'm the most biggest winner of my family and i get to brag about my life yeah, being overseas okay this this is a fantasy it's an idea so says the woman who's never been outside of vietnam before who's never been to australia who's never been it's harder than you think, okay? And I'm saying this from firsthand experience because I actually did move from America to here, so I know what this feels like, okay? Um, yep, yep. Brought your wife all the way to Spain, and there she is picking up apples. Uh-huh. There's a lot of people who are like, oh, I'm going to go to America and then go to a nail salon, and life will be good. Is that really winning the game? You know... I've asked some of these gals uh, who are about to move to America, oh, I'm going there to move, work at a nail salon. Great. Do you, have you ever worked at a nail salon? Oh, no. Do you want to work at a nail salon? There's plenty here in uh, Vietnam to get some experience. Oh, no. I would hate to work there. But I'm going to America to work at a nail salon for 40 years. Okay. All right. Cool. Uh, I have a friend. She have a good life here. But she went to America with her parents. So after one, two years, she came back to visit friend family here. She said, uh, the life in America is good. The weather maybe is good. But I didn't see anything except the people fit. <laughs> <laughs> Paint nails. Paint nails. Paint nails. Every day. <laughs> right, right, right. This is a reality of it all. So it happens pretty quick that these fantasies people have in their mind get shattered. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, um, this whole concept of I'm going to go to a foreign country and become rich is not necessarily true. Uh, because what happens next? Uh, you know, you get a quarter million dollars in debt on your house, and then you get debt in credit cards and phone, uh, and no, no, no. What about the medical thing? Oh, got those issues. How about that? You mean it's thirty-three dollars a year to have insurance in Vietnam, but it's uh, nine thousand dollars a year to have that in America? Whoops, didn't think of that. <laughs> but you know, look, money aside. What we're really talking about here is it's easy for a person to be silently depressed because they're away from their friends, family, food, traditions, life, 
friends. Maybe like Viet, uh, in Vietnam, for example, Tan Lai is a winner and um, has tons of friends, family here. If we have any issues, one phone call away, we're good to go. If we were to move to America, Tan Lai would effectively lose all friends she's ever made, classmates, all your classmates getting married, all the new babies, like, heck, our, um, your new nephew, you know, uh, being born, not there, not there. I uh, can't visit any of the, the younger kids, and I think that would make you sad. Yeah. People need friends and family. Mm hmm. Oh. So, a major advantage in this instance, I did want to point out by moving to Vietnam, my friends and family can come and visit me. Uh, how can I help you? Oh. Okay. Uh, don't even tell me. Yeah, yeah. Um, for my friends and family to come and visit me here in Vietnam, easy. For Tan Lai's friends and family to come and visit us in America, impossible, never going to happen. <laughs> so in this regard, it's actually a perfect little balance here. So that's kind of cool. Uh, mm. Now, um, we'll get to kids and stuff like that later, but all right, to just kind of stay as focused as we can here you know, on things in general, uh, don't be afraid of the idea of moving to Vietnam and living and building a life in Vietnam. I can say from my own personal experience, it's awesome. Way better. Way better. It would take me way too, it would take me another hour to talk about all the reasons why. <laughs> Whew. But I'll just try to hit some main ones here. Um, opportunities. There's, in my opinion, there's way more opportunities here in Vietnam. Uh, yeah, uh, there's way more opportunities here in Vietnam, and it's a lot easier to make money here in Vietnam. Um, and just in general, it's easier for me to make money here in Vietnam. People, I just, I was having a bowl of soup, and some woman pulled up like, oh, can all of my, our kids in the neighborhood all hang with you, Bao? This is all in Vietnamese, obviously, but, um, uh, yeah, and by the way, we have infinite money. Uh, how many times can you have them and what you can do anything? Blah, blah, blah. Perfect. Tan Lai, you got a fantastic job at a hotel here in, uh, in Hue City. And you, how, and you enjoy that, right? Yeah, I love my job so much. And at time, every day I'm working to like uh, have fun, enjoy my life at the hotel. I can talk to many people from everywhere. Uh, yeah, and sometimes I met some couple who are Western and Asian, American, with me, something like that. And it's very good, very fun to hear story about them. So it's very fun. Yeah, I love my job. Right. Now, if you were in America, you probably, A, you wouldn't meet many foreign people. Well, <laughs> non-normal Americans, I guess I could say. First of all. <laughs> B, it would be hard to get that job, much yeah, harder. Yeah. And C, uh, believe it or not, ironically enough, working the front desk, especially with the commissions and stuff, she's actually pretty rich. Yeah, like, it's a, me, oh, uh, it's a pretty good job, you know, overall. All right, cool. We're talking about a fun job, a good job. Right, but it's enjoyable, yeah. pays the bills. It's not like you're working for minimum wage here. Right. Yeah. Uh, and, but in contrast... Uh, you cannot expect to be a front desk woman or guy and then support a family in America. That would be a little bit absurd. Um, but that's very doable here. So whatever, the, there's a lot of opportunities. So that's a main one. Um, but I, let's just say having children. You know how crazy Vietnamese grandmothers are about spending time with their children? Wow. In fact, I'm going to have to argue with my uh, close family about, because they're taking uh, care of our future baby too much. <laughs> right. they would be like, can I have my own baby back, please? Because they're, they're going to insist that the baby just lives with them. I mean, this is the degree of family help that we've got. So paying for babysitter services did not occur to me because that will not happen, you know, out here. So in general, what I'm referring to is having the family uh, here is a huge thing. When you get married to a Vietnamese woman, the big bonus you get is the family comes with it. Wow. Okay. That means you've got dozens and dozens and dozens of people that will take a bullet for you, loan a motorbike to you, be there to help you out when the, if you got to move or 
Um, anything that they can do to help you, they'll they'll do. So, in that regard, having a, a local family is a huge deal. Now, to be sure, like we would have my American family, by all means, you know, in the states, by all means, my parents would gladly help with, you know, child rearing, etc. But it would be kind of weird of me to just hand a baby to my mom and dad for a week. <laughs> It'd be kind of weird, it doable, but weird. Um, um, I mean, calling up my sister, Teresa, and saying, here, mm-hmm. take a baby. I mean, it, <laughs> I it's, that. yeah, it's doable, but <laughs> damn, uh, not really. Um, so yeah, I guess family, babies, yeah, child rearing and stuff like that, Vietnam's superior, uh, superior place in that regard. Overall comfort and quality of life. In America, I'd have to work 80 hours a week and I'd be a traveling salesman. Here in Vietnam, I'm less than 20 hours or about 20, something like that. So I got a bunch of free time. That's cool. And my schedule is super flexible, that kind of thing. America has high debt. Uh, We have zero debt. Uh, That matters. America has high insurance costs. We have almost none. Um, America, damn near everything is ultra super expensive. Damn near, especially hospitals. Here, everything is so cheap, it's damn near free. Um, yeah, to get five beers before this, uh, uh, live broadcast, five beers plus a soda and some sugar cane was less than three bucks total. Um, so in a lot of these regards, uh, it's just cheaper and easier, but more to the point, it's more fun. It's just way more fun, uh, to live in a different, uh, different place. Um, Mm, we'll get to the okay super quick on the mosquitoes sure there's quite a few of them especially on the countryside especially at dusk do you need a mosquito net yeah it's probably a good idea in general uh although if you have a fan going on you're doing pretty good now are they clouds and are they asinine no that's pretty much a non-issue i guess i haven't really thought about mosquitoes whatsoever for months Mm -hmm. but maybe on the countryside that's there's a lot more huh yeah, can decide. Hmm. Okay. Now, next, um, healthcare. I'm not going to give the full details, but a quick skinny of it. Way better than you think. Unfortunately, a lot of um, first worlders or Americans will think like they hear words like developing nation or third world, and they instantly conjure up things of like some sort of, you know, back alley bullshit, or like they think of some horror movie like The Hostel. I don't want my uh, Achilles tendon cut off. Yeah. It's not like that. It's actually really awesome. What do you think about the hospitals here? Pretty good? It's pretty good. Pretty good. It's very good. We have many kind of hospital here. With like a, some hospital, we say it like a central hospital. It's, it's very good. Yep. Nowadays, they have many modern technical. They can do everything, even like a, get the heart. Heart like surgery. Yeah, oh, yeah. oh, heart transplant. Yeah. 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 yeah even something like that mm-hmm. so, yeah. Yeah, yeah i mean worst case you just pay 150 bucks you could round trip to bangkok thailand shit and that's uh the number one uh hospital on earth bummer grad uh international hospital in bangkok thailand yep and it's going to be about a fifth the cost of america or a tenth yep uh but if you want to go to a quick clinic sure you can go there too yeah. Uh, so there's a lot to be said about that. Uh, but in general, I can also say, look, an x-ray is like eight bucks, six bucks. Uh, <laughs> visiting a doctor is like three bucks or five bucks. Um, going to a dentist. Uh, in some cases, there's no waiting. You just show up. Oh, hello, sir. The, the dentist, uh, the, yeah, the doctor standing by. Oh, okay. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, tenth the cost of America. Boom. Um, so yeah, I think overall it's fantastic. I've had nothing but great experiences along the way. Maybe here in Vietnam <laughs> recently. Federic. Yeah, I love that fella. And he's super proud new father. Yes, a Frenchman with a Vietnamese wife living here in Hue forever. Great example of an excellent guy. Look here, my baby. Look at my baby. Yeah. <laughs> so, Brad, when are you going to be a father, too? Join me in uh, fatherhood. fatherhood. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, great fella. But I don't know. It was less than 400 bucks. I think it was like 350 bucks out the door from everything for the entire birthing process. And everything went perfectly smooth the whole way. Zero complaints. So, no, it's pretty good. Uh, I feel really confident. One of the reasons I want to live here, too, is the healthcare system. <laughs> 
I'm not going to go broke, you know, going there. Shoot. <laughs> um, anyway, moving forward, because again, we got. Um, okay, getting into the uh, marriage. Okay, the wedding part. All right, and then we'll we'll phases here. Uh, a few main phases. Uh, number one, I proposed to Tan Lai uh, <laughs> at the uh, live music bar, and I'll find that real quick. Um, okay, are you tell what happened? Uh, I didn't think about that. Like uh, he came here for three months, four months, and then went back to America, and then came here for something like that and went back to America. He did it many times mm. ago. And then that year he came back with some family and he invited to listen to some people singing there, have coffee. He sent a song. So at that time he sent that song, I was so surprised because I love that song and you know maybe one time I talked to him about that song. Maybe I didn't remember it. She said, uh, yes, uh, turn on the Wi-Fi. Turn on the Wi-Fi itself. Something like that. Can you do for example this Wi-Fi has to be on there. Okay. okay. And uh anyway we'll we'll do our best here, y'all. Yep. Alright, cool. God knows, things happen. So anyway, um the great thing is, um, mm, moving forward, proposed, surprised her, life is going good. No, moving forward, uh, <laughs> um, that was all exciting. Check out the video for more details. But, there we go. Next, um, I did want to say, Tan Lai brought up to me, oh, Great. Well, we're going to have an engagement announcement. And we're going to tell our friends and family about our engagement. Makes sense so far. And she's like, yeah, so we need to pick a day that we can have a party with the family. Makes sense so far. I'm free next Tuesday. And I'll bring a bottle of wine and everything will be going good. So says the guy. <laughs> it was no, 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 no. It didn't work that way at all. At all. Okay, they have something called that Le Hoi, which is effectively an engagement party. Yeah, 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 yeah. That, I know, I know, I know. So this is uh, one of these gotchas, okay? This is a huge gotcha. In Vietnam, they have an engagement party that is like 75 or 100% the size of a wedding. In fact, it's basically a whole full-scale Vietnamese wedding, tents. Because once she mentioned, we got to get a tent, we're going to get full caterers, we're going to get a videographer, we're getting a DJ. And I'm like, well, what's your definition <laughs> of an engagement announcement party? Oh, I could have researched that ahead of time. I could have Googled engagement party and traditions in Vietnam. I didn't. I just brushed it. Nah. Anyway, <clears throat> moments later, uh, she's like, your parents are coming, aren't they? Um... And uh, moments later, hey, mom, how are you? Good, good. <clears throat> how soon can you get your asses on a plane and fly <laughs> out here to Vietnam? Why? Well, you know that proposal thing? Yeah, that's all exciting. But apparently, uh, unbeknownst to me, they have a large-scale party that you're obligated to be part of. So that would be sweet if you could uh, <laughs> drop everything that you're doing and get your asses on a plane and fly around the earth and come to Vietnam for the first time at a moment's notice. <laughs> It's kind of how it sounded. Uh, they were champs about it. They did it. Yeah, yeah, it all worked out. But yes, effectively, your parents have got to be there for that. And yes, it is large scale. Yes, um, you know, there's uh, a lot to it. Now, if I were to describe a Vietnamese wedding, it will match quite closely with an engagement party. And yes, I do have videos of uh, the engage both the engagement party and the wedding. And I'll uh, post those in the meantime. But um, so engagement party is a thing. Huge. So plan ahead. If you do propose to a Vietnamese woman, um, or vice versa, um, yeah, get ready for that. It is true that a lot of couples will combine both the wedding and engagement party onto the same day. I did want to mention 
in the case of a multinational relationship, that's probably the best way to do it. It really is, you know, because then your family only flies in once um, instead of twice. Uh, sorry, mom and dad, but thank you, mom and dad. <laughs> <Thank> you. <laughs> um, and it saves money, uh, you know, et cetera, et cetera. But ideally, you are able to have two somehow. Next thing I wanted to point out. In the Vietnamese language, they uh, the word for wife is the, And since we're on the topic, the word for husband is chong. Um, type it into Google Translate if you want to see how it's spelled. Um, but anyway, what they, as soon as you have that engagement party, you're effectively husband and wife at, as of that time. Now, it sounds weird if I translate this back into English, because I'll say, they'll ask, like, Kobocha? I'm like, no, nah, I don't have a wife yet, but I, did, I do have a girlfriend, and we got, uh, wait, what's the word engaged? Uh, I asked her to marry me already, and they're like, oh, did you have the Lehan or Lehai? I'm like, oh, yeah, we had her engaged, and are like, well, you have a wife then, but you just never married her. I'm like, how can you have a wife but not marry her? <laughs> wait a second. Yeah, so like, but Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. A wife would not marry yet. Right. So the word fiancé is wife not yet married. Yeah, fun fact. So that was a little confusing for me, but powered through it. Yeah. So somewhere along the line, I um, after our engagement party, um, and, uh, actually, let's go there. Um, okay. I went back to the States and ultimately um, uh, went back to the States and ultimately uh, prepped up my life to leave for a one-way ticket here to Vietnam. Um, and that's a story of its own, but effectively it included selling off all my stuff, paying off all my debts, uh, uh, packing up everything, paying for, prepaying for a mailbox and storage for long periods of time, four-day goodbye party to all my friends and family. Um, you know, let's visit the grandparents the last time. Ha ha! That kind of stuff. But otherwise, prepare my life to be able to travel to um, a foreign country. Uh, so anyway, that all went quite well. Um, in the meantime, uh, skipping over a lot of details, but I did eventually buy that one-way ticket back here to Vietnam. And yes, we did have the full-scale wedding ceremony here in Vietnam at Time Life's parents' house. And yes, it was super awesome. Then I could say, the that I married already. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Full vuh. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. Now, and I'm just giving an overview here. Uh, I did want to mention there was a civil ceremony, okay? Which is sort of the equivalent of like going to the courthouse and getting married. Um, but, and yeah, effectively we did go to a government building and there is a government officer and so forth. And yes, there is a kind of a, you can think of like communist Vietnamese government wedding. No, it just. Civil ceremony. There we go. Yeah. It's yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Whatever. But, but, but that's a thing. That's a thing. So effectively there was three total ceremonies involved in, in this ordeal. Okay. So, <laughs> and then, uh, we got into the whole paperwork, you know, aspect. So that's, that's the overview. That's the overview, but let's zoom in a little bit here. Um, to, Okay. Let's go to the main wedding. Let's zoom into the main wedding. Okay. Preparing for where to begin on this. Where to begin? Uh, you guys can tell me where to begin or just fire away questions about a Vietnamese wedding. Okay. First of all, don't let your own wedding in Vietnam be the first Vietnamese wedding you ever went to. <clears throat> don't do that. Okay. In my own case, I've been to like a dozen weddings before my own wedding, so I know exactly what to expect. If you've never been to a Vietnamese wedding before until your own wedding, it is going to be astonishingly overwhelming, and you're going to have no idea what's going on, and you're, you're going to facepalm. You know, uh, it's going to be a disaster. Vietnamese weddings are loud. They're large scale. There's a lot to them. There's a lot of people. There's a lot of traditions. There's a lot of details. Are going to be happening. 
Perfect. So anyway, um, when it comes to the actual... Yeah, I, no, I just checked it with the Wi-Fi. I don't have good Wi-Fi on a rooftop, but story of its own. doesn't matter. Um, now, again, what does matter is um, when it comes to prepping for the wedding, there's a lot of angles. Uh, let's start with the paperwork. Okay, the preparatory kind of stuff uh, to be able to get married out here. There is a handful of legal steps that a person needs to go through. Now, what that means is, are some good examples of that include... Um, First, an affidavit of single status. Now, this is a gotcha that the United States doesn't necessarily have. Okay? What this means is a certified letter, well, affidavit, that means that you're not married already and you're overall in good standing and a good person and that kind of thing. Now, typically speaking, and um, typically speaking, a person will need to, in my case, for example, um, the way I did it was go to, ultimately we had a lawyer. We'll start there. Uh, now, once we've got a lawyer, they helped us arrange the paperwork and that kind of thing. Now, one th the way that we did it is I uh, made the actual application and effectively I made a sworn statement that I am indeed single. From there, I actually went to the American Embassy in Saigon. And uh, from there, I may have, ultimately I stood in front of an embassy official, looked at me, raise your right hand. I certify that everything written here is true and correct. Do -do -do, sign, stamp, bang. Look at your passport, bang, bang, bang. Then they hand back a signed notarized, I guess is the word, notarized from the embassy statement that indeed I am truthfully honest, boom, and that counts. In the meantime, Tan Lai, you had to go to um, your home village yeah. and uh, and get this sorted out too. Yeah, to Can you talk the, about that? To read the same thing like that, I had to get a paper to say that I'm single and good enough to marry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How did that work? Uh, to go to the the office, the police office at my hometown, they have a farm there to fill the farm and bring bread, passport and my ID and give the information to them. Yeah, and get the paper. Right. Now, um, by the way, I want to be abundantly clear about one thing, okay? And this is a gotcha. Our pesky use of the English language of words such as first name and last name. Now, we understand the English meaning of the word last. That means the last one in the list, the one on the rightmost side if you're writing from left to right. The family name. Great, uh, because in America, all family names are last. So last name is family name. So far, so good. First name actually means given name. So to be extremely clear, extremely clear, we say given name, middle name, which could also be called second first name, and family name, okay? The words in Vietnamese are ten, ten, ho. But, gotcha, it's actually ho, ten, ten. So, if you actually say the word first name in Vietnamese, that would actually refer to ho, which is family name. And if you say last name, that actually would be your middle name. And yeah. So, in America, I am Bradley William Hirsch. In Vietnam, I am Hirsch Bradley William. I want to be a Abundantly clear about this, and I'm really going to focus on this, because this fuck-up happens all the time, okay? For example, even something simple like getting money from Western Union. Yep, bang, because of this whole Hirsch Bradley William. But your passport says, you know, um, you know, uh, yeah, Hirsch Bradley William, but this was sent to Bradley William Hirsch. Oh, 
you can't get your money. Ha ha! So yeah, we went to uh, the office and she and they looked at my passport. Mm, perfect. Looked at my name. Uh, what is your name, etc. Filled out all the paperwork. And this took hours to get all this paperwork done. Then get a phone call. Whoops. We fucked up your paperwork. Yeah. We actually, uh, uh, instead of doing Hearst Bradley William, we put this to Bradley William Hearst. So the family name is not actually Bradley. Uh, and his given name is not actually William. And his second given name is not Hirsch. It's actually, whoop. So you got to come all the way back to the office and start all the way over and do all the paperwork completely over again. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was a lot less fun the second time. Got to point that out. Now, this is not the only time that this problem and whatnot happened. And yes, you can already tell that my attitude on this, I'm frustrated at this exact moment, and I focus the shit out of this one problem. So be abundantly, outrageously clear, outrageously clear. And know these two words in Vietnamese, ten, spelled T-E-N, which means given name, and ho, H-O, which means family name. Be abundantly clear on that because you're going to be filling out a lot of paperwork. And actually, sometimes the paperwork fucks it up, which is to say, ho should be family name, but then in the English translation, they will translate it wrongly into English as first name because, again, in Vietnam, ho is first. So you look at this, read the form in English, and it says first name. Oh, well, that makes sense. Bradley. Oh, last name. Oh, that makes sense so far. Hirsch. Wrong. Yeah. So go, when you're filling out this paperwork in English and Vietnamese, always look exactly what does it say in Vietnamese specifically and ignore the English nuances and just stick with the Vietnamese. Ten ho. Ho ten. Do that and you'll be good. Whew. I needed to say that, and I'll, yeah. Okay, gotta calm down, <laughs> gotta calm down. All right. Beyond that, okay, uh, it was all, it was pretty straightforward beyond that. Uh, in terms of paperwork, you had your affidavit single status, I had that. Now we did have a wedding in Tan Lai's village, which was awesome and great. To be clear, we have to like, sort of register the fact that we're going to have a wedding there. Is that right? Yeah. And what are some other requirements? So, because our wedding had many foreigners came to our wedding, so the police at the, the my hometown very very care about that. So they need to know exactly how much foreigner came to the wedding, and they need the list of the name, age of every foreigner came to the wedding. Mm -hmm. So they just want to make sure everything go perfect. They don't want any problem with the foreigner to come came to the wedding. Sure. So they take care about that so much. So right. We need to tell them detail about how many people will come, what time they come, where come, what time they leave, something like that. That's right. That's right. And so that effectively means you need a wedding guest list, basically, um, to put it nice and simple, which isn't that hard to produce, but obviously it takes some effort. Don't interpret this as insulting. Don't. Because it's not insulting. Uh, all that's really happening here is that they want to make sure, uh, well, they just want to cover their bases. That's all. They're just, uh, they're just folks sitting in an office just, hey, they want to tell their superiors, we did our due diligence, you know, that kind of thing. That's all. And, um, and yeah, in general, I, there are, uh, in a small village of a couple yeah. thousand people, everyone knows everybody, and uh, there's not a lot of secrets anyway. Um, and yes, there are people that, kind of sit in the bushes peeking, uh, oh, okay, how many foreigners are actually here now? Yeah, that kind of stuff. Obviously, there was no issues, and obviously, there was no problems, and obviously, uh, the, pe the officer that registered us, y'all met. <laughs> I mean, town of a couple thousand people, you know him. Right. <laughs> I knew you was a baby. Right. So, I mean, it's cool. Hell, a lot of the officers are at the wedding. Like, they're invited, too. Yeah. So it's all good, but be aware of that. Be aware of that. Um, <clears throat> in America, it's people don't care about that kind of stuff at all. Like, you would never have to go to the police station and give them a, a wedding guest list. That would be absurd. Um, so 
Um, and actually, as far as I understand, um, a lot of people are in, um, uh, as far as I understand, in Hanoi and Saigon, this has to be done as well. As far as I understand, um, a woman, let's say, who's from Saigon, and, but lives in Hue, just as a direct example. Yeah, it would be reasonable for her to need to go to her hometown or near her hometown to, again, get this affidavit of single status and ultimately register herself and so forth. So, yes, this uh, need to go to one's hometown uh, is a thing. Now, getting married, let's just say, in a major city, if you were to do a, um, what do they call them, wedding venue, um, then in that case... Uh, mm, I would imagine it's probably a lot slicker and you don't got to worry so much about it. We did an at-home wedding in a village. So again, that's totally different. So um, to, yeah, draw that distinction, I did want to say, everything good? Uh, I did want to say, uh, well, how could you compare um, having a wedding at home in a village versus going to a wedding venue? What are the pros and cons? What are better about the other? Uh, like uh, many people live in a city, they want to go to a wedding place to have a wedding place, wedding there because it's, they don't have the area at home to do that, and it's much more easier for them to go to the wedding place to do all the party. But for us, for me, uh, my parents' house on the village, so they have a big area to have a full ten for that. So it's more fun and easy and beautiful for us to have a wedding at home. So we have a big garden with a full tent and everything is went great. It's, it's much more easier and fun for us to have a wedding at home. And we can, we can have the party as long as whatever we want. But if we have a wedding party at the wedding place, like they say, if the wedding trip can last last for four hours, five hours, and that's it. But we, we have fun at home, it's okay. We can have fun at until midnight or even tomorrow, the, 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 the next day tomorrow, something like that. It's okay. So what costs more? What about cost? Uh, at home, it costs more because we have to build the full tent and we have to set everything. But when you have a wedding at the wedding place, they have everything already there. Mm -hmm. So, like we have, when we have a wedding at home, we have to to pick every small thing, every small detail, even the flower and the tent and the decorate for the house. Everything we have to pick. Every small thing. It's okay. That's right. And um, along the way, um, yeah, it, uh, for a lot of people, especially in a major city, um, your best bet is just go to a wedding venue. It really is. It's just open and shut. You can pretty much show up there. Heck, they'll probably rent you the alley eyes while you're at it. They'll probably already have the cake and DJ and this and that. So you pretty much show up. To give you an idea, um, it can range from anywhere 150,000 to 350,000 per guest. Now, by the way, the word guest is cock. So yeah, it's the cock cost. Um, and they do it by the cock. So yeah, to uh, put these in dollar terms, it's somewhere between $7 on the low end to about $18 on the high end for per cock for a wedding. Um, and you got to figure it's going to be in a lot of cases 300 is a pretty reasonable number. Um, things go viral in Vietnam pretty quick, so yeah, something to definitely be aware of in that regard. Now, um, uh, but again, overall that tends to be a lot cheaper. Now I did want to point out a standard wedding gift that most guests give most of the time is 500,000 dong. Is that right? Would you say? It depends, five, four, three, it depends how much they, they can, how much they want to give. To sure. Them. Yeah. But we, we could say 500000 yeah. about. So $25 or something is a common gift amount. 
Sure, close family members might give you a million dong, which would be more like 40 bucks or 50 bucks or something. Sure. But I bring this up because when you have a wedding at a nice venue, of course it would be reasonable that pretty much every guest will show up with an envelope and a card and hand that to you and ultimately at least pay for their own seat, right? Would you expect so? Yeah. Yeah. So if, let's just say you invited 300 people and it costs 300,000, but on average they'll give you 500,000. So really by the time you're done, you're about breaking even. Uh, at, by the time you're done with an entire wedding, just based on the gifts that folks uh, give you. Does that sound right? Yeah. Okay, cool. And we're referring to the party aspect. Now, obviously, we did the, the at-home thing, and yes, that was more involved. But it wasn't as bad as it is in America, specifically. Well, we went to Dien Ben Phu. Yeah, chúng tôi đi ở Dien Ben Phu vì có nhiều người mà mà có thể giúp người chuẩn bị và mà muốn giải tỏa hơn. So they actually went to Dien Ben Phu Street. So the uh, and actually they have about eight wedding planners and uh, people who um, rent tuxes and stuff like that. But effectively, you talk with one single wedding planner, and they basically have a full menu. And uh, they're like, okay, so ingredients include, and I'll I'll give you a link to uh, more ingredients here soon. But uh, ingredients may include, all right, wedding gifts. What kind of gifts are you going to be bringing? What kind of cakes would you like? What color of flowers would you like? Okay, do you want us to build a tent? Awesome, outside the house, which is a common way of doing it. Terrific. Well, we're going to send our crew out there and we'll measure it all out and see what we're dealing with here. So yeah, they, this one single outfit will do all the flowers, all the wedding gifts, and the tent, and we'll sort you out for clothing and LEIs, you know, typically. And they also do all the catering. Isn't that right? Catering. Uh, yeah, the tukan. Yeah, yeah tukan. Huh? Yeah, you, if you want those people do it. So they can do it. But if you want to pick other people, maybe you think it's better, you can ask the other people. So. Mm -hmm. so all of these things are optional. So that means as you're going down this checklist, um, yeah, you can have them uh, set up catering for you. Got it. But yes, you're right. If you didn't want to use them and you want to use your uncle, aunt, or someone who has a restaurant, more power to you. Uh, they're pretty low pressure. And overall, things are quite cheap. You just, do, 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 do. you know, again, pick what you want. It's extremely clear and out the door. Um, let's see. Now, um, also, wedding invitations. Uh, those have got to be sent out to everyone. Now, American tradition, typically, we're talking about a year in advance. In American tradition, it's uh, we have the old RSVP ASAP, you know, kind of thing. That means we'll send out um, maybe a year in advance. Uh, we'll send out an invitation in fancy writing in a fancy envelope, and it's going to have a return envelope pre-stamped with a "I'll be there, graciously accept" with how many people, that kind of thing. And it's expected that each of the guests are going to mail back this, you know. RSVP thing, and then you kind of organize your whole wedding over the course of a year, blah, 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 blah. It does not work like that at all uh, here. Not at all. RSVP is not a thing at all. Um, mailing out invitations? Yes. In fact, uh, most of the time people will mail out, let's say, a thousand invitations, maybe. Uh, and you may mail them or hand deliver them, something like that. A lot of people who are having a wedding will keep a handful of invita invitations handy and have them in their motorbike, for example. Oh, I'm going out to party with this guy. Great. Uh, oh, and can you please invite your brother in my behalf? Oh, and you write brother's name in there. Cordially invite. Tanto, you know, uh, or whatever. And you personalize each one. Put them each in five separate envelopes. Here, can you give this to blah, 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 and your cousin and your dad? All right, thank you. Yeah. Something like that. Is that right? Yeah. How much does it cost to do a thousand invitations? To go to every people? To no, no, no. Yeah, key in, key in, tip me. Yeah, key in, tip me. Yeah, five thousand for one? Oh, okay. Cool. Yeah, so you're talking about 20 cents a pop. So do the math, I guess. Um, mm. Moving forward. Um, I did a, d a different invitation style than typical. They do, when you go to these wedding invitation places, they already have forms 
you know, kind of filled out already. They just kind of insert your name, insert location, whatever, and they'll actually make it for you live right there. So that's pretty sweet. Um, I, I, I made my own, obviously. Um, one quick tip, by the way, I put on the GPS location. Oh, yes. Uh, anybody who wants to show up to the wedding, show that to the cab driver. Oh, perfect. And people show right up, no problem. Uh, by just simply putting an address or a vague location, it's possible to mess that up. Um, now, in Vietnam, it's paper. It just is. They want to do a paper invitation. That's just their, their, their thing. Uh, if you get an old person and you texted them an invitation to your wedding, I, I can't even conceive of that. Like, you're... It's, it mean you don't respect them. So, and even for us, when we invite family to the wedding, we cannot use the invitation. We have to go to the house, house by house, to invite them. In person? In person, yeah. Mm -hmm. We yep. have to do that. Yep. Gotcha. Get ready. I mean, it's cool. I think that's terrific. It's a great, it's a great tradition. Totally behind it. Yeah. Yeah. But you got to be ready for that idea. You got to really be ready for that. Okay. Um, and also about invitations too. Um, in my case, I went a little nuts with it, uh, which is to say, I mean, I made a website for us. I even uh, recorded, uh, because I have a lot of friends and family that are from uh, America and or I've got friends from other countries Slovakia, you know, for example and Sweden. Yeah, and wherever Yes Yeah, yeah, it was as international as it gets folks. Yeah, yeah um, So yeah, and not only did I make a website, which is an extra step you don't need to do but I'm a varsity player. So yeah um, and uh, Made my own invitations. Yeah, but along the way because a lot of my friends and family were coming from America to Vietnam, they all have a lot of questions. For example, um, how much is it going to cost to get there? Where am I going to stay once I'm there? What's going to happen at the wedding itself? Uh, how much money should I bring? Uh, do, I, do I need to uh, uh, give a wedding gift? What should I wear while I'm there? How long is the wedding going to actually take? Uh, what is everybody else doing in terms of getting there? What is, do you have a Facebook group or something like that? How can we communicate with you? What are uh, all the things I need to know? Yeah, we get the standard list of like your standard top 20 questions an average person would normally have. To field those, what I ended up doing is uh, I just recorded a quick 30 minute or 40 minute long video. Um, here, I'll switch it. Um, about, the, about the whole works and basically laid it out in detail. So that means uh, everyone who's interested in coming to the wedding ah, can just check this one video and again, 30, 40 minutes, I explain the whole works. Cool. Um, people who are ha half considering going to the wedding, like maybe, maybe I can, maybe I can't. Oh, watch the video. Uh, pe even people I've never met before watch it like, oh, oh, okay. That kind of thing. So making a video ahead of time is not just a varsity move, but it's a lazy move because it saves you 60 hours of re-explaining everything verbally, you know, to everybody. So if you're a foreigner getting married in Vietnam, get all the details that you can and the most common questions uh, that anyone would have and uh, record a video and give that to everybody. It's easier. Or, I mean, write it out long form if you want, whatever. But do something so that everyone can kind of be on the same page, you know? Um, <laughs> right. Yep, yep. Good point, John. Thank you. Now, mm, um, also related to kind of inviting and bringing people over, um, obviously, that it's a bigger leap to go from America to Vietnam instead of from Austin, Minnesota to Minneapolis, Minnesota. Okay, there's a fair amount of commitment involved here, <laughs> you know. Now, we could call it a destination wedding in this regard, Okay. With that said, that effectively cuts down from, let's say, 200 people down to, like, 50. Uh, that could be a good thing. You know, the people who really, truly, deeply care will be there. So, that's pretty cool. Now, uh, other gotchas along the way. Okay, in the beginning of the, the wedding, here's kind of how it lays out. I'll give you a broad overview, and then we'll zoom in. First, 
uh, the groom is going to gather at another house near the, the bride's house. In this case, um, the uh, we went to Uncle Boo's place, who just so happens to be like a couple hundred meters from uh, the wedding itself. Perfect. So everyone gathers there ahead of time. We the, All the gifts are going to be brought there. Um, and people are going to get all set up. Let's sort out the tie. Let's get this done. Let's all talk together. And ultimately, there's going to be a procession from... Uh, that place to the actual bride's home. This is a key point, okay? Even if uh, you rent out a place, a wedding venue, there is still a kind of a parade effect. Isn't that right? Yeah. That means, yeah. uh, so the brides and the bride's family will be waiting at the door kind of thing. So don't skip this. You can't skip it. <laughs> Acknowledge that this is going to happen. So effectively, the groom and the groom's family will bring all these gifts. The little kids will hold the umbrella. Yeah, and, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and the lanterns. And the lanterns, yeah. Get them, yeah. Um, sweet. Our guys left and right. Again, uh, play the gifts and so forth. Maybe in like a wedding, wedding they have a, some kid go with the bride. That oh, with the flower girls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They yeah. Come, they but, put the flowers yeah, but here we have a couple, the little kid with the lantern go from every people. Mm -hmm, yeah. mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, it's super fun. Yeah, yeah. Um, and um, yeah, upon getting to the house, it's highly formalized. Now, I will also be sharing a video here. Um, I'll put in the show notes. Uh, a, a, another person that made an excellent wedding video that walks you step by step exactly, exactly what they do uh, every step of this wedding. And they can explain it in more detail uh, better than I could. So I'll actually look that up now. But next, uh, once you show up, here's the thing. You, or the, bre or the groom, I should say, uh, the groom needs to have, in English we would call it like a sponsor uh, or a representative. Mm -hmm. So that's, you could kind of think about it like a godfather. We could use that as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, uh, in my case, I chose Ku, uh, who, uh, was the leader of the school that I volunteered at, but effectively you want to pick someone who, A, you're close to, you can't rent that guy, <laughs> uh, but B, uh, it, or number two is a respected member of society, you know, in other words, an upstanding citizen. You don't want full sleeve tattoos, guy just got out of prison, oh, I met him while I was in the game, no, not that guy. You, uh, and ideally, he's got gray hair. That's kind of nice, too, okay? So the representative is not the same as your best man like it is in America. So that means you do not pick your best friend to be your representative. I guess you could, but uh, generally speaking, you pick an old guy. So, uh, nope, uh, it's got to be a Vietnamese guy, first of all. Okay, it, boom, let's start there. And be ideally an older guy, um, but and and uh, also ideally a person that really understands culture, tradition, and knows exactly what he's got to do. So um, because again, once you show up, it's going to be highly formalized. And so I'm just going to use the word sponsor for right now. So ah, representative. There we go. So your representative, your sponsor, will actually formally show up at the house and say, hello, we are here now. We would like to present some gifts to you. Now, the, the, the wife's equivalent of bridesmaids. They don't call them bridesmaids, of course, but uh, the, the wife's family, and this could include sisters and aunts and, you know, cousins or friends even. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Will be there waiting to accept the gifts. So, yep, pass it up. Yeah, mm -hmm. bring it in. And then all of these gifts are displayed on a big table. Sweet. And they look awesome. And if you're going to get gifts, you might as well get awesome looking ones like dragons. Yeah. And yeah. And phoenixes. Yeah. We had awesome gifts. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, you may as well. Anyway, um, yeah, you bring all that magic in. Then we go to like the next stage. Okay. And, and that is like um, formal introductions. So what that means is, uh, and we're not seated here, we're all standing, in our case, in a room, 
the the bride's family is all on one side and the groom's family is all on one side. So far, so good. Then the bride's representative will personally introduce pretty much everyone in the family. For example, it'll sound like this. Hello, this is my, or this is the bride's grandmother on her father's side and her name you know, that is ha you know and, and this is her husband this is her two sons so the, he is the uncle who is older than the father uh, on the father's side and these are his two children and so forth and so forth does this take a while yep <laughs> Sure does, sure does. And uh, then likewise on the groom's side, one by one, this is the mother and father of the groom. Hello, so they, they give a wave, you know, Paul and Linda Hirsch, great. Um, now, would it be, does, this is all gonna occur in Vietnamese, obviously. Um, could it occur in English? Sure, but it, it's respectful to do it in at least both. You're welcome to do it in both, but uh, don't skip on the Vietnamese part at all. That's impossible. Disrespectful, I should say. Um, mm. So after you introduce uh, everyone in the family, next, um, how do I say this? Ah, there's basically two forms of wedding gifts, okay? One is a cash in an envelope with like a nifty card sometimes. Um, uh, good man, John. <laughs> Yeah, dude, I'll help you out. I'll be glad. I got you, buddy. Yeah, and yeah, you be a champ, you know. Um, uh, now, the second form of gifts here, gotcha, is gold. Gold, okay? Now, to put this in proper context, historically speaking, uh, for Vietnamese people, gold was the equivalent of a savings account. What I mean by that is... Uh, with the fluctuations in currencies over time, especially given inflation, I mean, switching from uh, piasters, you know, to dong, um, you know, and so forth. What people would do to save money is they would take their dong and uh, um, mm, take all the dong that they've got and ultimately convert it into gold, in some cases gold rings, and then keep these gold rings. They're easier to keep secret, you could bury it, whatever, and they hold its value. So that means a certain amount of money in gold 50 years ago uh, versus now, you're better off having the gold than the cash, okay? Given that fact, the mother and father of either side, especially the groom side, uh, gives gold to the bride. That means a gold necklace yeah. and rings. And so can you explain that in more detail? Uh, yeah, the gold gifts. It's, it's normally the groom family give the bride the gold whip, but the the more important thing is the necklace. And if they have more, they will have the earring, the the ring, and many things by gold. And the bride family do the same thing. They will wear the some gold like that. For bride, and after that, the groom parent and the bride parent, and then the bride sister and brother family, and groom sister brother family do the same thing. So it's cool. Yeah, and does that mean that isn't she going to be wearing a lot of rings by the time you're done? <laughs> yep. <laughs> Is that right? I have 10 feet. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, and yes, probably true. No. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, ah, okay. Are they different? To a degree. Now, what we're giving you, of course, is our first-hand experience. And in general, this is how it's going to work. In general, in general. So would you say that these traditions are common throughout the whole country? Yeah, for the whole country. Yeah. yeah. It's there. traditional for the whole country. Every people have to do that. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Um, so, 
Pretty much. I mean, are there going to be minor variances? Sure. I mean, is it different uh, getting married at a person's house versus getting married in a, um, a wedding venue? Sure. But all of these main ingredients that we're talking about are always going to exist. So that's cool. Um, yeah. So, yep. Then there's the gold sharing ceremony. Then, woo -wee, we got to have, I got to go there. Chow cow. Chow cow. Um, you got to have the chow cow. Now, chow cow, uh, in English, uh, we use the word betel nut. Um, and without getting into too much detail, what I can say is, you know, betel nut is that it's that green seed that's actually white in the middle. And it's typically had, uh, you have that seed along with the, like the green banana leaf with the lime in it. You mix these two together and you chew on it. And actually, uh, it, it's kind of like a hit of caffeine right away. Like, it'll do the job. It'll wake you up. Uh, it's, it's good stuff. Now, it also dries out your mouth. It's like effectively eating a mouthful of chalk. It, that's what we're talking cotton chop level here. And it turns your whole mouth red. Yes. So those old Vietnamese ladies with black teeth and red lips and red everything, spitting red spit, betel nut. Now, this betel nut is a symbol of marriage in a lot of different ways. Um, I won't get into the whole history of it and stuff like that. You can read it up on yourself. But the point is, yeah, that's one of the gifts that get brought at a wedding is betel nut. Uh, 105. 105. Yep. The I did want to mention the word for well, 100 is cham, and the word for year is nam. So 100 years, cham nam. But also the number 105 is cham le nam or cham nam. So 100 years and 105 sound the same in Vietnamese, cham nam. But that's a euphemism for forever which is to say a lifetime of happiness, a century of happiness, a century of, you know, good fortune and things like that. Cham nam han phuc, cham nam vui. Yeah, is that right? Yeah, yeah. So 105 is a special number in uh, Vietnamese weddings because it means a century or forever, basically. So yes, it'll be 105 cakes, 105 betel nuts, 105, you know, uh, side things, uh, a lot yeah. of things. Man full cake, we say it's man full cake. Man full cake, yeah. yeah. Which is like wedding cake, but yeah. not like the Western stacked wedding yeah. cake, but rather um, uh, those, they're going to be little square boxes, you yeah. know, that have like a gelatinous rice based cake. We don't have an English word for it, but <laughs> look it up, you'll figure it out. Yeah. Uh, um, anyway, um, beyond that, uh, the betel nut. So the mother of the bride and the mother of the groom. Well, those are, that, that's different. No. That's different. Uh, look up, if you want to Google it, Google like traditional, traditional wedding gift. Uh, here we go. Uh, uh, there we go. Just Google it. Yeah, you'll, you'll figure it out. Yep, battle nut. There it is. Um, Yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. You, you, I, I mean, I, I, it'd be absurd for me to explain in intricate detail everything. But the bottom line is, yep, we've got all this set it, set up. The the each of the mothers uh, have a share, kind of like a cheers, and have betel nut together, and of course get their pictures taken along the way. Um, and my mom was a champ. Okay, <laughs> all right. So this is what I got to do, huh? Never tried it. Yeah, what a champ. And then the fathers of the groom and fathers of the bride pour a bunch of alcohol together and cheers and do a cheers of alcohol together. Boom. Now you're all done. That's, that's it. That's it. So that's the main ceremony itself. Now, typically this is going to occur in a person's like living room or they're in, in Vietnamese, they call it like house church. Yeah. And the bride father like uh, pray for ancestor to say that to, to talk to the ancestor about the wedding so like uh, he want to tell the ancestor that today Tana and Brad married now we have a son-in-law in the family it's traditional so the bridal family bride father had to do that in front of the auntie yep and is there incense involved? You bet. <laughs> uh, is there going to be like a, a moment or where 
uh, she and I also stand in front of the altar and uh, and light some incense together. Yeah. Yep. Are we each going to bow together simultaneously, probably holding incense? Yep. 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 But just check out videos on YouTube. You'll see more detail on it. Yeah. All right. Let's move forward. Now, um, there uh, beyond that, there's a lot of moments where we'll actually, then we'll kind of go out into public and there's going to be a handful of speeches, probably cutting the cake. Probably uh, fireworks of some kind. You gotta have fireworks. <laughs> you know, it's pretty uh, traditional. And um, along the way, I did want to mention there's going to be a wedding MC, okay? And that me and he's just kind of be the pump up guy, explaining things guy. He's not your representative, but he's just like, all right, now it is time for the cutting of the cake ceremony. Yeah, mo chum nam han vo. You know, get everybody cheering, that kind of thing. So bear that in mind. Oftentimes there's uh, two MCs in some cases. If you're having a multicultural wedding, it's very wise to have, yep. Um, if you're having a multicultural wedding, it's very wise to have um, uh, a translator for sure, okay? <laughs> you gotta have a bilingual MC, period. Don't go bad without it, why? Um, anyway, moving, moving forward yet, yeah, uh, after you, we have all the magic on the stage, cutting of the cake and so forth. Music will probably start, um, but moving, uh, beyond that, then as, a the couple, uh, you're going to, um, go from table to table and basically cheers with everybody, you know? Um, and it's a photo op more than anything, but be a champ about it. Yeah. Go from table to table, see with everyone. Maybe there's eight people sitting on each table, you know. Yeah, T hang out. So the idea is you go to the table, talk with everyone, say hi with everyone, cheers with everyone, get a picture with everyone. And that's the perfect time to say thank you for coming. Thank you for being here. Good to see you, Uncle Boo. Hey, it's been a while. Yeah, let's dot, 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 dot. Now, I want to be very clear. If you, you're going to have all 300 people that want to cheers with you. So if you were to individually do cheers with all 300 people, wouldn't you get pretty wasted? Yeah. <laughs> what about 100 cheers? Yeah. So what that means is you've got to be very diligent, especially in the initial stages of your wedding, to not get wasted. All right? So that means when you do take a sip, just micro sip or... Instead of champagne, fill it with juice if you can get away with it. But it's kind of understood that we don't want to get the bride or the groom or bride wasted, you know, in the first hour of their own wedding. I mean, people are pretty, you know, <laughs> acknowledging, but they're still going to try. Yeah. So just be aware of that. But this is not the time, you know, this whole table to table thing is not the time to be a bump on a log. Okay. This is not the time to like, be a loser. This is not the time to check your shoelaces. <laughs> this is not the time to shut your mouth. This is not the t no. This is the one time you got to shine. You could shut your mouth for pretty much the whole wedding except this part. Okay? This uh, so be a champ about it. Smile with everyone. Shake every human's hand. Everybody. And uh, be happy with everybody. Do as many selfies as you can with everybody. In a lot of cases, these folks have flown across the country or across the ocean in order to be there. And on top of that, are giving you money uh, and want to wish you the best. The least you can do is shake your hand. Don't you think? <laughs> right. Um, then there's going to be catering and a buffet. Most people, now this is one big difference between Vietnamese weddings and American. Number one. Uh, Vietnamese weddings, people tend to sit, you know, in your, your, your groups of like, let's say eight or 10 to a table, they tend to pick one chair, sit down and never for the rest of the wedding. That's very common. Beer is under the table or near the table or catered. Um, food is going to be catered and brought in. New plates are brought in. New cups are brought in. So you don't walk to the buffet line and you don't walk to the bar. You just sit in one spot, okay? So that is different. It's definitely different, but you have to just be mentally prepared for that. Also, with regards to seating, uh, in America, occasionally you can assign seating. I've seen that happen before. Uh, but in Vietnam, no way. That would never happen. 
No, they will, your guests will choose where they want to see. You know, simple as that, which makes sense. Um, mm. Now, um, in my case, um, I did want to actually build a bar because every wedding I've been to in America, there's a bar and a buffet. I don't think I've been to a wedding that doesn't have a bar and a buffet. But in Vietnam, I've never been to a wedding that has a bar nor a buffet, you know. So bear that in mind. Now, we did build a bar, yeah, because it had a lot of Americans there. And again, if there's no bar, they're like, what the hell? <laughs> this ain't a wedding. But I also had a few of my friends be kind enough to uh, be a waiter or waitress. Hey, what drink would you like? I'll make it for you, bring it to you. So we could kind of blend the American tradition and Vietnamese tradition. Um, now, in terms of organization, it's self-organizing. What that means is the grandmothers tend to sit with the grandmothers <laughs> just by default. I mean, it's a rare day that you get two grandmothers sitting next to four drunk guys. <laughs> you know, it just, just by itself. You don't have to see the sign. I mean, they'll just gravitate, right? And if it is eight, eight hammered drunk guys and two old ladies, the two old ladies will be like, I'm going to go check my aunt on the other auntie. All right, see ya. Yeah, it, it self-organizes. Uh, similarly, drunk old, uh, the drunk guys don't want to sit with the kids and the kids don't want to sit with the drunk guys. I don't know. Or maybe they do. Who cares? Uh, but it's self-organizing, so you don't got to worry about it too much. Um, don't push people around. Just let them do what they want to do. Sit where they want to sit. Um, now, I wanted to be super clear about this one point right here. Okay? A lot. Okay? This is the big one. And I'm going to write it and say it. Uh, mm, okay. Uh, mm, okay. Don't be a lazy fool. Don't be a lazy fool. Don't be an idiot. Be a champion. Be a champion. Damn it. I've seen a lot of foreign guys that marry a Vietnamese woman who are like zero Vietnamese of any kind. Uh, they don't want to meet and greet anybody. They don't want to drink any beer. Oh, and I'm, I'm vegan. I got a man, a man. Shut up. You know, like, uh, whatever. Uh, and they're, in some cases, they're, in some cases, they're like, oh, I don't, we're not really into weddings and noise, and this is just a ceremony anyway, blah, 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 blah. Don't be a lazy fool here, okay? And I bring this up because, and you can shed more light. Uh, yeah, I'm going to say, yeah, I think we are high down on, yeah, I'm going to say, yeah, I'm going to say, yeah, we are high down on, yeah, we are high down on, yeah, we are high down on, yeah, one Japanese and one Australia. Yeah, when they have a wedding, they just... In her village. Oh, uh, yeah. uh, in Tanai's village. Uh, yeah, I forgot about that. Um, in uh, Tanai's village, there was two weddings prior to... Let me rephrase. Uh, there were thousands of weddings, but uh, two of which were to foreigners, multinational weddings. There we go. And so I was the third foreigner to get married in Tanai's village, Yunghua. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. what happened uh, the other two times? You tell me. Yeah. So two guys, like when they have a wedding, they just show up there to have a wedding. <laughs> they don't yep, speak. Yep, thousand people, but yeah. They don't speak any Vietnamese. And they just do whatever their wife say. Like uh, go to the altar and have the incense and bow to the ancestor. They do, they did whatever the wife say. And then when they go around to every table to cheer with every people, they just follow the wife and said nothing, shut their mouth. Because they cannot, even they, they didn't smile to people because they think it's too so annoying or too loud or they all Vietnamese people, so something like that. So they are not really enjoy the wedding, really. So. Yeah. Example. There. Yeah. Yes. You're exactly right. And uh, to flesh it out a little bit, to make it. Uh, okay. Imagine this. Australian people, uh, an Australian dude, zero Vietnamese. Oh, and I don't drink beer. Oh, and I don't eat meat. Oh, and I don't. Uh, I've never met a Vietnamese person ever. Oh, and I'm about to embark on the rest of my life with a Vietnamese woman and make her part of my soul forever. But 
Fuck Vietnamese, fuck the culture, fuck the people, hey, and fuck the village, yeah. And then uh, the other people in her family, oh, I don't need to talk to them, nah. Um, and actually, I don't even need to shake hands, yep. Doesn't even shake hands with folks, never cheers with folks, never looks anyone in the eyes, never met anyone, remembers zero people's names. Yeah. And the show up at the wedding is only... The mm, I gotta be here today. Hopefully this is done by three. Yeah, it's only the room, only room, no room family, no room friend. No, it's only the bride family, bride friend, and one room. That's it. So, no friend. Mm. Can it be done? Yeah. Are you gonna die? No. <laughs> I mean, will you officially be married afterwards? Sure. In a certain regard, mission accomplished. But. Let's face it here. Normal people, I mean, if someone did that in America, that would be so outrageously rude, you know, and just weird. I mean, imagine what that would be like if my daughter married a Japanese man who said nothing to anybody and was checking his watch the whole time and couldn't wait to leave and was pissed that he had to show up at his own wedding. Uh, don't be that guy, okay? Don't be a lazy fool. Be a champion. Now, um, and what did the village people think of uh, the Australian man? Uh, he, he, every time, I'm not, I'm, I, I don't want to say bad thing about Boston people, but for the whole, fa uh, the whole village to know about that Australian guy, he is a foreigner in the, the village, so every people in the village know her about him. But he had never really talked to people in the village. He not really hang out to people in the village. And even he doesn't speak any Vietnamese. And, and of course, many people in the village don't speak English. So he make no friend in the village. And many people in the village just think, ah, oh, the foreigner, the children guy, not really friendly. They are not, he not really respect people in the village, blah, 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 something like that. So, about the foreigner guy married a Vietnamese woman, people in the village to think about that guy. They just show up, not talking, not really friendly, not really making friends, like that. And even when the people in the village went to his wedding, he not really talking to people who came to his wedding. Yeah, so, and when they heard about me have a boyfriend, foreign boyfriend, they thought uh, maybe Brad just like the whole kind of fun guy. They were not prepared! <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I was the absolute opposite of all that shit. Yeah, I met everybody. Yeah, I was, uh, uh, yeah, again, meeting as many folks as possible. I shook hands with everybody. Uh, the most friendly bastard they've ever seen. And uh, yeah, and remember names from time to time. And I got all the family pronouns banged out, which is a whole side thing. I mean, what's the difference between Chu and Kao and Ma and Ba and uh, Ba Noi, Ba Noi. Got to know it. Nailed it. Um, but yeah, when you go about it that way, the Vietnamese folks in the village were really delighted. And we became really good friends. And uh, the family was just like, bravo. Bravo. I mean, in Vietnamese, but you know, you get the idea. And, and it was beautiful. Look, you get one shot at life. One shot at a marriage. One shot at a wife. One shot at a wedding. You might as well be a champion. You know, so don't fall into these traps of, oh, I'll just let my wife take care of everything. She can deal with it. She can plan the whole thing. Just tell me where I got to be and when I got to be there. We'll bang that out whenever you tell me it's a nice day to do so, and then we'll call it a day, and then we're married after that. Don't do that. Um, be an active participant in the planning stage, in, uh, in uh, building the tent, picking out the color. Be an active participant in all of it. Get to know the family ahead of time, you know, that kind of thing. Now, here's actually a fun tip that would, uh, yeah, I mean, exactly, exactly. So the important idea here is um, 
to... Um, here we go. The important idea here is, again, not just be a champion, but uh, do it right. Now, one fun tip that will go a long way is... Um, I talked with Ted Lyon, we actually laid out a family tree. What that means is we take out a piece of paper and grandmother, grandfather, grandmother, grandfather, father, mother, aunts, uncles, cousins, and we uh, point out all the pronouns. This is banoi or banoi, you know, that kind of thing. And ideally, we can find their picture on Facebook. Like, here is a picture of my mother's mother, right? Um, and here is a picture of my father's brother, or whatever the case is. Yeah, lay it all out on paper very, very exactly. You don't have to memorize everybody, but if you know the top 10, top 20 people, you know, at a wedding, I think that's a good thing. Yeah, at least you know the pronoun. At least, mm. yeah. Right. Yeah. When we say the pronoun, we mean like, for example, um, younger uncle on the dad's side is Chu, older <laughs> uncle on the dad's side is Buck, but any uncle on the on the mom's side is going to be Cow, which is handy because it's the, the town lies mom's village. So Cow, 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 Cow. So that means I don't have to pronounce their first name. I just call them Cow. That's it. So it'll be a whole table of cows. <laughs> Hey, ciao cow, ciao cow, yeah, hung up like cow, yeah, and you're good to go. Yeah, so it's not very complicated. You can bang all this out in less than an hour. Uh, but get to know her family and actually walk through it that way. In one hour, come on, you're getting married for life. An hour, be a champion, not a lazy fool. You know, really. Um, and yeah, for that matter, when it comes to passing out the invitation, go with them. Go with that. Go with uh, go with your wife. Go to her home village first. Go and meet them face to face. You know, before you knock on a door or before you pull up to a house, just like stop. Okay. <laughs> so we're about to meet at ten random Vietnamese people I've never seen before. Cool. <sighs> before I walk in, can you please explain whose house is this? Uh, is he on your dad's side or mom's? Oh, on your dad's side. Great. Younger brother. Okay. Awesome. Hey, and uh, he's got three kids. Great. What are their names? Awesome. Okay. Whew. So I should call him Kao. Perfect. Uh, his name is Kao Bu. Ah, perfect. And then uh, his wife, I could call her Yi. Ah, okay. Or all, maybe. And whatever the case whatever. is. Whatever, whatever the case is. But plan that out ahead of time. It doesn't take long, uh, but makes your entire trip better. Alternatively, stare at the ground. Don't meet anybody. Never shake any hands. Check your watch. Can't wait to leave. <laughs> it sounds weird, but 90% of folks pick the latter. Yeah. <laughs> okay, um, moving forward. Um, about the weddings and stuff like that. Be a champ. There's going to be a lot of photos to be had there and that kind of thing. Um, videographers. Look, it's about 50 bucks to get a videographer and or a photographer. In America, in contrast, it's going to be 1000 to 1500 bucks to three grand. This, in Vietnam, this ain't the time to save money. I kind of figured out that one man is unable to do every photo of every single event, let alone take all videos of everything. In contrast, in our wedding, we had three. Uh, two photographers and one videographer. Yeah. And, uh, and they all did a fantastic job. Absolutely terrific. Absolutely. And they were like 50 bucks a dude. That's not the time to save money. <laughs> So, uh, anyway, that worked out pretty good, I think. They, I, I loved what they did. One guy stood at the entrance, for example, and took photos of everybody as they're yeah. coming in, right? Yeah. And the photographer guy, one followed the bride family at the early morning. One followed the groom family at the early morning. So. Bang. Yeah. So, shoot, get four videographers. Whatever. Uh, <laughs> Why mess around, you know, at this point? Because, uh, hell, you could have just one guy follow you around to be the selfie guy so you don't have to fumble with your phone in and out. You know, whatever the case is, right? So that's a big thing. Now, here's another gotcha. <laughs> um, in America, when we hire a photographer, it is 
typically one day. That means they show up before the wedding and they're, let's say maybe two days. Okay, so the rehearsal day, for example, the wedding rehearsal, they'll uh, go in, all right, all the bridesmaids line up, all the groom's family line up. Perfect, mom and dad, perfect. And then maybe the wedding day itself, they'll on the dance floor at the bar, various people and so forth. That's cool. Sometimes they'll uh, uh, have like a ceremony in America. Uh, they'll have a uh, something at the church and then they're gonna have like a two, three, four hour gap and then the reception later at night and that two, three hour gap, they're gonna do the pictures outside or at a park or something like that. So far, so good. So when I hear the idea, hey, we're gonna take some photos for our wedding. Great. I know what this is. I've seen this 20, 30 times. I know exactly what's gonna happen here. So says the guy uh, who's never done this before. Yeah, so anyway, uh, we went out before our wedding and um, with some videographers and photographers and so forth. And we're talking about a damn team here, okay? So that means that you got, we got our driver and then we got like the makeup woman. That's all she does is just makeup and clothes changing and stuff like that. And then you got the umbrella holding guy, and then you got the lighting guy, and then you got the photographer guy, you know, and stuff like that. So you're going out with a team effectively to take photos throughout like perhaps the city or again, a park or whatever the case is. That's cool. Uh, in this case, it was like, shit, like 42 degrees Celsius or something like, so what, 110 that day, terrific. Uh, and I was in full tux and about an hour and a half in, I was like, okay, can't wait to, uh, I mean, I'm happy to take pictures and stuff, but getting a little thirsty and hot, for example. So anyway, we should be wrapped up here in the next 20 minutes of figure. So awesome. During our fourth hour of, uh, taking pictures together, I started to like question, like, wait a second, wait, 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 wait okay. Whoa. When you said we're going to go and take some pictures today. In my mind, I thought we were going to go and take some pictures today. But in reality, uh, for the entire day, like 10 hours, we are going to um, uh, take pictures and make it happen. And um, so as a result, um, yeah, uh, I mean, it was fine, but you just got to know that. When it comes to taking photos in Vietnam, this is one aspect where they don't mess around whatsoever okay they, there's a lot of things they don't do in vietnam traditionally speaking but this is one thing they do asians and cameras okay they go crazy am i wrong tell me i'm wrong yeah okay they take this super super seriously so anyway when it comes to photo day uh before your wedding be prepared it's going to be at least one entire day that's just shot and uh bring some beer bring some water bring a cooler uh you're going to be at it a while but to be fair, it's super fun as well. I mean, to take photos uh, with, uh, you know, with your bride, that's great. Be a champ about it. Go to some great places. Bring an OEI. Change your tux. You know, think of some creative spots. So we did some in our home. We did some at the Citadel. Some in a park. Some in the forest. It was a great day. But be mentally prepared for it. And so, again, my only grief was, you know, three, four hours in, I was like, oh. Okay, I was kind of surprised about this one, all right. But, um, but anyway, have fun with that because what they're going to do before your wedding, so again, I want to be very clear, this, this photo day occurs at least like a week before your actual wedding because they want to print large scale photos, okay, which would be in inches like 20 by 30, okay, like a, a big old poster, right? And uh, that's going to be displayed at your wedding at the entrance. Um, and pretty much every time. So that's cool. Uh, might as well make, again, some good ones and so forth and pick out the ones you like. And sure, they'll give you a CD of all the photos. Sure, they'll give you a photo book afterwards. And sure, they'll print out some large scale ones for you. Great. Following the, the picture taking thing, these, this photo, the typically speaking, both the groom's family and the bride's family will hang up a photo of their wedding. Or one of these wedding photos that are taken on said day. And most people will hang up uh, one of their own wedding photos taken on that day. So yes, it's very typical in Vietnam. If you go to a house that actually, where he had four sons or daughters, four children, and all four are married, yep, 
there's going to be four 20 by 30s hanging up on the wall. Bank, 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 bank. You know, complete with the date and their names and that kind of thing, which is cool, I think. Is that yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, every family do that. Right. Like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, again, no worries if you're mentally prepared for it. And they don't tell you that on a lot of the other guides, like, photo day. But, yeah, yeah. Anyway, so that's a cool aspect. Now, let's move forward a little bit. Um, unless there are more things about the wedding you want to say? Yeah, go 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 no ma 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 I did want to say last thing. Think about a wedding is not like a union before God, okay? In a, a promise to God done in a church under the cross of Jesus Christ in a Christian wedding <laughs> style. That can't, and I, uh, I mean, more power to you. Yeah, yeah, you do have that option. And yes, they do have Christian churches out here. More power to you. Get it done. Great. Life is good. But uh, mm, traditionally speaking, yeah. traditionally speaking, think about it more like this, okay? People's family lineage is far uh, deeper than we would normally consider it from the West. Let me phrase it another way. Um, a lot of Vietnamese people, for example, Tan Lai's father, can remember back like 15 generations. Okay? So that means if I were to ask him one day, hey, what's the name of your great, 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 uh, grandfather? Ah, well, <laughs> da, 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 da. he's going to know. Yeah. They take this extremely seriously. All children, all you know, husbands and wives. Yes, they do have a mental list, an actual physical list. They'll have their family tree in a book. In some cases, this book will go back 300 years. Okay? I want you to really fathom how seriously they take this. Okay? It's not unusual to have... What's the word in English? Relics? Mm, Hand-me-downs? Uh, special items. For example, my friend Moon, uh, he has a tea set in his house under a glass case. And he has a book that's hundreds of years old under a glass case. This particular tea set is like 300 years old. That means... And this was used every time there was a wedding in this family. Specifically, his great, 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 great grandfather brought this tea set over to the house of his great, 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 great grandmother like 300 years ago. And since then, every member, every time a member of the family got married, they use that family tea set okay again i'm going to keep repeating this they take this extremely seriously which is good i think it's fantastic and i agree with it and i think it's awesome okay so by definition really when we get down to the brass tacks here what is a wedding well it is a welcoming ceremony for you as the groom or bride into the family tree. That means this 300-year-old book, your name is going to get written in there. Yep. Uh, the place where all the other family members the last 300, 500 years are all buried. Yep, you're going to be buried there too. 300 years from now, they're going to know your name. Okay? So what you're really joining is not only you and your wife, of course, by default, and your family and her family. But, uh, mm, um, cool, buddy. Cheers, Henry. But uh, along the way, what we're really talking about here is you entering into the entire family tree. That means you becoming part of their legacy forever. Okay? So this is a very, 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 very big deal. This is why the wedding itself occurs in front of the family altar. And yes, the family altar is a representation 
of all previous generations that, you know, have been in the family and so forth, including photos of, you know, uh, relatives that have passed away already, the book, yeah, the, the, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So really what the wedding is, is in effect a welcoming ceremony. Hello, uh, hello, former relatives. This is Uncle Boo talking. And I want to tell everybody here, this is a new member to our family tree and to our large family. This is Bao. And this is Brad. And he will be part of our family and legacy forever. I want you to accept him into our larger family for all time as we have accepted him here in uh, the living world. Ooh. That's what we're talking about. Acknowledge that. Acknowledge the depth that we're working with here. If you do so, and you approach this with that mindset, it's beautiful. It's the most beautiful thing that will happen to you. If you approach this as a, uh, this is, uh, I can't wait till this is over. Uh, never shake hands with anyone. Uh, let me get out of here so we can get our asses back to Australia. You're missing the point. You're using the Mona Lisa as a dinner plate. You know? So anyway, moving forward though. A lot of you all have questions with regards to uh, visas, etc. Okay? So I wanted to go there real quick. Okay? So I know it's a ma major subject change. Okay? Um, now, uh, what we basically have, or in my case I have, is a marriage visa. Okay? So that's cool. Now, um... How do I go about that? Well, obviously, I've got to have the formal paperwork, you know, all lined up uh, and obviously be fully married. Everything all be legal there. Life is all good. So far, so good. But ultimately, to kind of skip to the end here, I got this uh, straightened out in Denang. Obviously, showed up with all my paperwork. Life is good. And yep, five-year marriage visa. Now, as long as I continue to remain married and everything's on the up and up and I don't get incarcerated, don't die, whatever... I'm able to renew this indefinitely with no trouble. It's pretty much guaranteed renewal. Now, the stamp itself is going to be a six month stamp. So what that means is at least once every six months, normally speaking, I've got to exit the country, generally speaking. And um, yeah, so with the marriage visa, you know, yeah. Uh, but, uh, uh, the 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 visa the step the bump yeah um uh, you, you, can you explain it in you, you can renew it six months in the city office and renew it one year at the border mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. but you get uh, five years mm -hmm. visa that's right so <clears throat> basically what this means is again yes once a year I can renew it in, in person without leaving the country but uh, basically once a year I've got to leave the country and come back in easy border run uh, half a day done um, now uh, what does the marriage visa actually allow me to do well, let's get into detail well um, one thing is um, the Effectively, I can live here and stay here. Okay, let's start there. That's easy. Now, in terms of buying property and things like that, that's a common question. Well, on any visa I would like, I'm able to buy, normally speaking, on a normal tourist visa, I'm able to buy an apartment or a condo, but I am not able to buy a normal house, like a non-apartment condo. I'm not able to buy land on a normal visa. In this case, having a marriage visa. Similarly, I am personally alone able to only buy a apartment or condo, but I am not able to buy long-term property such as a house and land. However, Tan Lai and I, my wife and I both together, co-buying, yeah. So, of course we can, no problem, isn't yeah. that right? Yeah, yeah. Yep, and similarly, we can rent a house, no trouble at all, and life is good. Speaking of, I wanted to be very specific about this one specific thing. There's a lot of things Vietnamese people and Vietnamese government don't care about. 
there's a few small things they really do. And residency is one of them, which is to say, which address do you live at? Or this particular house, exactly the names and of uh, the people that are living here at this house. They care a lot about that. Isn't that right? Yes. In fact, they have like, in English, I would say residential police, address police, something like that. An entire division of the local police force that only focus on who is living where. That's cool. That's cool. But that means that uh, when we rented this house, for example, yes, a police officer knocks on the door, comes right on in. And I mean, and they're super cool people. You know, Jung, you know, on Jung? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, officer Jung. He's a super nice guy. Of course, of course. They're not Gestapo, yeah. But he's just like, oh, hello, are you enjoying yourself here? Oh, that's terrific. How do you like the house? How did you find it? Great, do you want to live here a while? Great. So, um, is everything okay? Can you show me your, uh, you know, your paperwork? Right, isn't that right? And then what kind of paperwork does he ask for specifically? The, to, and what did you show him? The, the marriage license and yep. the visa. Yes, you know. Okay. Yeah. And he's like, oh, okay. You're a foreigner living here, but you're married and legal yeah. and registered. Okay, awesome. You're a, you a foreigner living here, but you have a ma marriage license. It's good. Mm -hmm. It's already good. So. Mm -hmm. so again, obviously, if you follow the steps, everything, you know, this is all natural and fine. But I wanted to say, again, they're very specific about this. Um, very, very specific. Now, um, I, uh, moving forward, though, um, let's see. With my marriage visa only, in terms of being legally allowed to work in Vietnam, a marriage visa is different uh, than a uh, work visa, okay? A marriage visa is different than a work permit, is also different than a working contract, okay? So they're not the same. Um, so the question would be, am I able to take my marriage visa and then go and get a job at a, um, uh, a school, you know, locally here? What do you think? Probably not. Yeah, I think it's not. Mm. No, that's fine. I have no intentions of doing so. Um, but are you able to get a work permit uh, on, you know, on top of it? Probably so, yes. Are you able to work with a marriage visa? Probably so, probably so. Do you have to get a marriage visa in order to be married here? No, you could be a tourist, uh, you know, just do your three month thing, yeah. or you could have a work visa and not get a marriage visa. Yeah. That's cool. Ah, you don't have to get a marriage visa upon getting married, okay? Your marriage visa is different than your marriage license, okay? The marriage license mm -hmm. is you're married, you're officially together, that's forever. No renewing, no stamps, no nothing, okay? As long as you got that, you're good to go. To see this all a different way, if you've got a work visa already straightened out for the next handful of years, four or five years, and you're married, cool, keep going with it, great. If you wanna have a, a work visa, you know, or a business visa to be more accurate, you know, in the long run into perpetuity and never get a marriage visa, more power to you, great. <laughs> That'll work just fine, okay? In my case, <laughs> I have no need for a work visa or a business visa. So in my case, I use the marriage visa as just a handy way of saying, saving border runs and of course, saving money in the long run. <laughs> whoa, 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 dollars? Or? No, Vietnam, no. Oh, just Nam Cham? Nam Okay, so the mar oh, that's cheaper than I remember. Uh, the marriage visa is about thirty bucks. About, well, I'm not really remember. It's about thirty bucks, it, and you're good for five years. Yeah, and you're good in five years. All right, sweet. I said the number two hundred earlier on Reddit, but uh, I guess it's cheaper than I thought. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, and yeah, pretty straightforward to line up and do. Okay, so that's kind of the skinny of it on what is a marriage visa and how does that all work. You're not obligated to get it. 
But in my own personal opinion, I think it's quite nice. And I'm happy with it. And until further notice, that's what I'm going to keep rocking with. Now, a lot of people ask a question about, hey, what about uh, uh, becoming a full citizen, getting a Vietnamese passport? Well, that's a good question. What can you say about that? It's not... It's too difficult for, for normal people to get married here. It's for Vietnamese government, they don't, they don't accept that. Like uh, some foreigner who work for for government, who have government, and who are scientists, do many useful things for Vietnamese country. So they will give that for those people. It's very, very rare. And normal, just a normal guy, normal foreigner get married with a Vietnamese woman here. No, they don't think about that. No, of course not. So it's not easy to become a Vietnamese citizen, no. And, um, thanks for your patience. Uh, <laughs> And uh, along the way, I think this is important to point out, there's no huge need to do so. Okay, to say this a different yeah, way. there's no need. There's no need. Okay, to say this a different way. Um, right now, I'm effectively here on a marriage visa and allowed to, basically, in effect, allowed to live here forever. Cool. So far, so good. Uh, but... Um, I am not going to really take any further steps to be legally integrated into Vietnam. I'm not going to take any more steps than I have already because I have no need to do so. So, am I a Vietnamese citizen? No. Am I, if I do nothing, allowed to stay here forever? Well, no. Um, and do I have a Vietnamese driver's license, an ID card? No. Will I get those? A Vietnamese passport, driver's license, citizenship, etc.? No. Believe it or not. Okay? This is a little odd because in American laws, etc., it's generally understood that a person is either A, working for a work visa, or hoping to get a green card, or ultimately hoping to get full citizenship. That's something that they're shooting for. That's cool. But uh, in Vietnam, it's very reasonable to not do those steps, but rather, again, hang out with a work visa and or marriage visa and call it a day and never move forward from there. So, the advan um, I wanted to also point this out, that me having a Vietnamese passport would not be superior to, in terms of usefulness to an American passport, to say that a different way. My American passport is more useful and I can travel to more countries more easily than with a Vietnamese passport. So if I were to walk through any airport anytime for the rest of my life, I will be showing the, the American passport anyway. So ha getting an additional Vietnamese passport would not make sense because I would never really use it. It would remain empty forever. Okay. Um, similarly, uh, having a Vietnamese national identity card, uh, inevitably, they're going to ask for my passport anyway. You know, so if I hand them the Vietnamese identity card, like, you have a passport too? Throw that over the shoulder. Thanks. That's actually what I care about. So me having a Vietnamese national identity card would not make my life better. In fact, it would sit in a drawer unused forever. Um, are there any other advantages to uh, becoming a citizen? What do you think? I don't think some Westerner want to become a Vietnamese citizen. No, it's not, it's not have anything, I think. Right. So to be very clear, uh, I could. Is did it? Yeah. That is everything I said, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
Uh, and uh, and when we talk with the police together, and I tell them exactly my plan yeah, yeah, yeah. that I'm on a marriage visa and we'll just use this forever and taking no further steps. And what do the police say? It's good. They're happy that we have a marriage license. Yeah. That's it. That's it. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that's kind of the final word on the visa stuff. I just wanted to to draw that out for folks, you know, and hopefully that can be helpful for you guys. So great. Um, now, I did want to also say that, um, okay, uh, we used an immigration lawyer in this case, okay? Uh, the green company. Now, the, the immigration lawyer, actually, uh, the company, and maybe you could add the, the link to them if, if you want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, they have an office in California, United States, and in Saigon, and in Hue City, among other cities. Now this is terrific because they're able to correspond between the United States and Vietnam quite easily. Fax documents back and forth, for example. Um, I can call them, I can call the California office at, during normal working hours in California and talk in English with a native speaker that works there on behalf of my case, which is shared between both. Similarly, I can show up into the office in Saigon or uh, here in Hue City and life is good. Yeah, so that's pretty handy. Um, and yes, are, are they expensive? I don't know, probably. But, meh, can it be done without them? I don't know, probably. But look, I'm a lazy guy. Uh, for about a one paycheck that I would get in America, done, that'll work. Now, um, I did want to cover this though. There's uh, two sides to getting married and two sides of the visa, among other things, okay? As a, a key example, there's the aspect of me being integrated and ultimately legally able to live here in Vietnam, uh, hence the marriage visa, etc. okay? That's one side. Now, the other side, of course, would be Tan Lai becoming an American citizen and ultimately having the, getting an American passport and having the ability to travel with the same rights that I do, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, okay? So when we talk about getting a lawyer, we're really talking about two different halves, okay? And this one uh, group, San, uh, the Van Phong San, and the other? Uh, okay, yeah, go to the chat by Yana. Yeah, I got the chat by Yana. All right, we'll share the link right here for you guys. Um, they're able to handle both sides of it, which is terrific. Now, I did want to mention uh, getting citizenship, legalities, blah, 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 blah. For me to, uh, for me to uh, be able to live here in Vietnam indefinitely, bang, almost free. Wow, 50 bucks, good to go. 50 bucks every five years and I'm smiling. This was so easy, except for the, yeah, yeah, basically, generally speaking, easy. No issues, be here forever, come and go as I please, travel anywhere, no worries, life is good. Now, the amount of effort that it takes for, let's say, Tan Lai to become an American citizen, better light a cigarette, okay? This can take 10 years and thousands and thousands of dollars and tons of time and tons of details and legalities and steps and lawyers involved, etc. We're talking, it's, it's nightmarishly long and convoluted, complex, and ultimately tons of different layers of bureaucracy to deal with, Vietnamese law, American law, and sometimes these laws change from year to year. And oh man, and then uh, requirement, it's nightmarishly long. So legally speaking, with regards to uh, visas and passports and citizenship, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. This whole legal dimension is ridiculously easy in Vietnam for me, for us to live here, but ridiculously hard for us to live in America. And same is true for a couple that wants to move to, let's just say, Australia. It would be ridiculously hard. So bear that in mind. Yeah, that's all. Uh, that... Uh, if you really want an easy way to do it, just come move to Vietnam and be done with it. Okay? Next, 
Uh, here is a gotcha, especially related to America and Vietnam. And I want to be very clear about this one. Um, the, we had, originally, we had the idea that we want to get married here, of course. And then Tan Lai and I would go, after our wedding, go to America for, let's just say, a month or two, meet the family, roam around, that kind of thing. And then come back here to Vietnam. So far, so good. That makes sense on paper. When you talk with the normal immigration people, they're normally going to say, oh, yeah, that sounds cool. Furthermore, we had the idea that we would live in Vietnam perhaps nine months and then in America for three months, something like that, or maybe six months, six months. Great. But, uh, three months in America? Right, but the problem is it does not work that way. And no, we cannot do that. There's a very specific reason why. We did, we put forth the paperwork such that uh, Tan Lai would be able to go to America and have a green card waiting for her. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great. So yes, can we go to America right now? Yes. Will she get a green card when she shows up? Yeah. Yes. But? I have to spend at least six months in America until I become an American citizen. Gotcha. Yeah. That means, yes, it's effectively sort of a one-way ticket. What that means is, yes, you've got to actually stay in America at six months plus one day a year. <laughs> a day. Long year. Yeah. yeah. Until you're ultimately a citizen, which can be, again, 10 years. So this whole idea of just going to America once and then coming back to Vietnam, three, wait three years, go to America once, nope. Can't do it. Can't do it. Because here's a problem. If you ever spend less than six months a year in America, for example, again, go there three months and then go back to Vietnam for nine, what happens next? So they cancel your American citizenship. Oh! 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 And then, and then what happens next? No, you should, can visit the America by the tourist visa. Mm -hmm. It's not the merit visa. Right. So what this means is, if we were to theoretically go to America for three months and then return to Vietnam, they would cancel the green card, cancel the entire process towards citizenship, and cancel the whole shooting match, you know, visas, etc. And uh, ultimately cancel the whole application, request, or whatever they call it, uh, petition for... They cancel all that stuff, basically, forever. That means, uh, after they cancel everything, we'd have to start over at zero. But when we start over at zero, uh, the American government's going to look at, like, oh, they applied for citizenship, but... Red stamp, denied. Well, now they're reapplying? Nah, denied. Actually, it would be denied effectively forever. Yeah, once you get denied once, you're effectively banned for life. Not banned from America, but banned from getting a green card and starting the citizenship process over again. So, what does all this mean? Eh, we can't go to America. If we do, it's a one-way ticket. I mean, by all means, perhaps, so instead of going to America for just once right now, perhaps in five years, maybe we'll consider it as a good idea. And maybe we will want to go there long term together. Great. Perhaps we will. In which case, once again, stay there indefinite or stay there until full citizenship is earned. And once uh, uh, Tan Lai has got a passport, then we can do WTF, right? <laughs> so anyway... That's the that's kind of the short and skinny of the, the the visa thing. It's it's not that complicated to understand, but it does take a bit of explanation because that is a gotcha. They don't normally tell you. Now, as far as I understand, this is also similar in Australia. That is to say, when you go to Australia, you can't just show up for one week and then go back to Vietnam and and then become a citizen remotely. Nope, you've got to actually live in Australia for a certain period of time. But once again. 
check a lawyer, check the books, go from there. So, cool. Uh, visa stuff. Um, no. Um, mm, money. Last one? Money. Um, I did want to say, um, let's see. It is very important to have a handle on not only money, but how to move money around. I have, um, basically, we effectively share money together. And I am able to move money from the United States to uh, Tan Lai via Western Union. Super useful. Super, or not Western Union, uh, Wells Fargo, my main bank. And do a bank transfer, it's about $7 per three grand, you know, that we send over. So yeah, overall, it's pretty slick. Um, but definitely have the, the money thing sorted out and figured out. Your ability to move money from, let's say, Australia to Vietnam, America to Vietnam, without needing to use your check card and, an ATM, and withdraw at an ATM. Be smarter than that. Whether you use a cryptocurrency, do uh, large-scale wires or whatever, be able to move money back and forth remotely. You know, let's say, can you move money from PayPal to a, a Vietnamese bank? Yes or no. It's a whole topic of its own, but all I'm saying is be prepared to be able to move money back and forth, but ultimately um, be prepared uh, to share money together as a married couple. You know, that makes sense, right? Yeah. I mean, if it's like, I got my money, you got yours, woman. What's the point? But anyway, um, we'll wrap it up here. It's been going a little long yet, but hopefully this has been helpful for you guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hopefully it's helpful. Uh, feel free to ask me anything, anytime you want. We wanted to give you a broad, big overview on it all. But uh, good luck on everything. And uh, I wish you the best. Getting married to a Vietnamese woman, in my case, number one thing, best thing I did in my entire life. Yeah! And uh, together for life, victory. Cheers, guys! Thanks for hanging out with us. Yeah, cheers, Nicholas. Nicholas. Yeah, 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 yeah. Can't wait to meet you, buddy. <laughs> Crow 2? Yes, I do. Yep. Yo, on. See you too, buddy. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Got to get it done. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll drop you some info on... Um, uh, getting in contact if you want to learn some Vietnamese with me, buddy. We'll help you out with that. No trouble at all. I'd be delighted. And, and I'm delighted to talk weddings and love and happiness, too. Anytime with anybody. Yeah. So, you got a buddy here in Vietnam? Look me up. See you all around. Cheers, guys. See you, guys. Cheers. Bye-bye. Done.